We got Louis C.K. in the studio, April 23rd, the Brigada Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City. That's that's uh, that's a great gig for Louis, and uh, man, you should go see him, obviously. I saw oh, Louis, yeah. oh, we talked about it the last time you were in at Carnegie yeah. Hall. Yeah. What an amazing show. Thanks, man. Just that's an amazing show. Great. Yeah, it's Poor perfect God, for it's it. such a cool Perfect for it. It's the man. only place in East Atlantic City that's... It really is like Vegas, kind of, That it's got that Vegas vibe, it doesn't feel like... Like, I stayed in a, another hotel right on the boardwalk once, Ooh. and I, it felt like I stepped into the 70s. And it feels like yeah. you're in Atlantic City. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know you're in Atlantic City. <laughs> right. The, like, the Brigada the, could trick you into thinking, man, I took a fucking like, flight yeah, to Vegas. I went to Vegas. The, the, that's exactly the difference, yeah. There's some old diner waitress bringing yeah. the drinks at this other casino, bringing the drinks to the, the table, and you're just like, ah. Oh. And then you look at the Borgata babes and shit, but walking around, they're just... Stunning. No, the Atlantic, the other Atlantic City places, it's like you're faced with the economy you're hurting with everything you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, there's supposed yes. to be more of a buffer there. Yeah, yeah. Where you can get lost in it. But Atlantic City, the dealer looks at you like, thanks for fucking up my hometown, asshole. Would you like another card? <laughs> like they just look depressed. God damn, that is it. You know? Yeah, yeah. My, <laughs> my father owned a house and now I live in a fucking shack <laughs> right. so that you could play blackjack. I yeah, hope you're having fun. Yeah. Oh, look, blackjack. I would hit on that, yes. <laughs> you so see the corruption. All you have to do is just drive around a little bit, less than a mile yeah. from those beautiful casinos, and you realize they don't give a fuck no. about <laughs> the local economy. No, it's all being sucked out. <laughs> it's like, and, I don't know where that money's and, going. It's another kind of tick, but it's a remote. It's like a, it doesn't even spread nearby. No. It's no. like a scientific taking money. It's like a tick that has a long-distance <laughs> sucker. Yeah. They must have helicopters at night that literally lift, lift it the money up into the sky. To make sure it does not touch. Even touch yeah. the local economy. <laughs> Anybody And there. the politicians, they obviously just look the other way. Yeah. It's like they you're not even going to throw a dollar into the economy? No. Who, no. Who, who are you talking about? Yeah, who you're going, you yeah, what, what, what are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? Who are you trying to say? Who are you who you're, who you're what, saying what, is, what, is doing what, this? What, 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 what? <laughs> you're right. Yeah, exactly. We're already in in a weird spot with uh, Donald Rumsfeld. I bet, yeah. he, I bet he knows where that money goes. You know what? I think Atlantic City's beautiful. <laughs> oh, <you laughs> every inch of it is beautiful. The Borgata. No, it's, it's fantastic. Go so, see Louis. Jobs. Though. They got yeah. jobs. They got jobs everywhere for jobs. 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 How many people they employ? Jobs. There weren't those jobs when it was uh, no. before the casinos. I don't know. No, what there was went just on there. a really kind of a nice area. Steel Pier. <laughs> the hell happened? Where someone could actually open a store and try to have a business <laughs> instead of a job. But now they got jobs. They get to wear a vest <laughs> and deal cards to fucking assholes and Gaddafis. <laughs> Yeah, Gaddafi. They get oh, to that's fucking great. Uh, jobs. Yeah, you mean people used to open up their own family business down there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like bakery a, or right. delicatessen. Yeah, wherever the fucking like wherever the the Trump down there is, is does he have one down there? Oh, he's oh, got yeah, the he Taj Trump and the Marina. Marina. I don't know how much. Yeah, he Trump actually Marina really sitting where some guy used to have an old fish <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> from he had the restaurant from 1850 in his family, <laughs> and now it's a fucking Trump Marina hotel. It's right I there was, on the I water. worked that fucking place. Or is it Trump Castle it was called? Uh, I don't know where I, that is I now. Think, uh, yeah, I think I they know. changed the name at but some point. I did. I worked at Trump Castle, and uh, I, I remember just watching people. I had never really been down there before, and I'm just watching these fucking old ladies from around the country <laughs> yeah. come on buses. Like from the middle of Ohio or Kentucky, literally. Yeah, like you see yep. a bus that says, like, Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah, but... ah. <laughs> and they fuck. <laughs> and these exactly. fucking old women come out of the bus. <laughs> and they're all, like, like to they took uh. a medical hit from the trip. <laughs> <laughs> like, you just see them. Uh. <laughs> And they get out of these fucking buses. They, they were in for hours, days. Yeah. Blood just clotting in oh, their legs. Oh, helping each, you know, the 60-year-olds helping the 70-year-olds off the bus. And they go get shit rooms. Yeah. And then they pour buckets of fucking coins. All of their fucking retirement, all they got left. They yeah. just pour it in buckets into these machines. <laughs> And then they leave. It's leave. A, and then, so I'm watching all this, and it's all says Trump all over it. And I never. And then I was in an elevator, and Trump got on with Marla Maples at oh, the time. Yeah, okay. And everyone was like, oh, "Oh, there they are!" They were really excited. They saw them. All the oh my god, there's Trump and the woman he's fucking illicitly. <laughs> 
And they get on the elevator, and uh, and uh, Trump looked miserable. I was in the elevator alone with him, just by chance, and he just looked miserable. Uh. He looked so unhappy. Yeah. And all that money, I realized, is a weird like he has all this billions of dollars, but he's fucking miserable because he needs a hundred billion to look in the mirror right. and not want to kill himself. He needs that. These old ladies from Kentucky, they don't need anything. They have like maybe a thousand dollars in the bank. Right. It's like they're coming. It's like a religion. Like they're coming to help him feel better. Like they're coming <laughs> Just to give giving, him money. Giving him the money. He's like, I have a hundred billion dollars and I don't fuck it. Fuck everybody. It's not enough. <laughs> and these old ladies are like, I have maybe a thousand. You can have all of it. I'll, I'll, I'll give you help. all of it. I'll take a bus all day to give it to I, you. We could have pumped it into our own economy where we live. Yeah, I could have given maybe... it to my neighbor's store that closed yeah. last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I figured I'd come all this way just to dump it into Hopefully this machine. Hopefully make you a little happier. Uh, yeah. That's cool. With, yeah, with the, the only buffer being uh, this vague hope that I might yeah, leave that I with may be more. one but, of the trillions. But it ain't going to happen. So no. it'll just pour, pour money out. I want to know more about the family fish business. <laughs> <laughs> the little restaurant that, that was there. That poor guy. That's forget that. <laughs> little, forget with his that. little boat, he would Maybe just a little go bait out shop. every day. Bait shop on the pier. No, oh, he used shop. to wipe off the table when you walked in, and yeah, he'd feel nice, real proud. Right? Yeah, nice. <laughs> you'd smell like the ocean air. It was open Ooh. windows in the summer. What was his yeah. last day like? You think? Uh, <laughs> wrecking Trump, ball, a bunch of suits a, a and ties, with the whole family just no. outside crying. Yeah, and you now in that exact same spot, it's ring, 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 Oh God, that's all you did. It was it was Donald Trump mm. and a bunch of other guys in suits with golden shovels right. taking that photo yeah. right. of them breaking ground and in back is the boarded up fish place yeah. just ready to be plowed asunder. Over. That was there for 150 <laughs> no, it, years. Yeah. You know, and it's Amer It's not the fault of some corporations or Donald Trump. It's like Walmart kills. All small yeah, the town small economists, and... but it's not Walmart's fault. It's the fault of the fucking people. I used to have a house upstate, in upstate New York, and I and there, and there was there was a town that had all these beautiful old diners and general stores, mm -hmm. and they all closed one by one because of Walmart. But it wasn't fucking Walmart's fault. It was the people that lived in that town yeah. that don't give a shit about their neighbors. But is it giving it's, a it's shit? It's the American basic consumer who's like. <laughs> Well, okay, I could spend I could spend thirteen cents less on a mop. Yeah. So fuck my fucking neighbor. <laughs> fuck my neighbor who's had that store in his family for you know who's who's taken care. You know, there's like a million George Bailey moments in there that town's history where yeah. the whole well, I'll give I I'll give a check to your you know baseball Let's... teams with names John, John's General Store. You're right. Yeah. Like those the whole community coming together to do stuff. Yeah. Fuck yeah. that. I want to buy a Jim Carrey movie three pack <laughs> for seven dollars. So <laughs> fuck the old movie theater with a Wurlitzer organ. <laughs> but think of like think of Blockbuster Video. Now that caused a big thing because it pretty much closed down all the little mom and pop video stores. Stores, yeah. Which was a great family business. Which was a family business yeah. and yep. shit like that. I remember those things and having to go Green in. And lawn, you'd have to buy nice a membership lawn. fee when you yeah. first get in. It was like a hundred bucks, and and that you, was just to try to keep the was, store. Yeah, to keep the alive. store open. <laughs> like, but then Blockbuster came around. Now, what do you want to do? Go into the mom and pop and wait a week for the the latest release? Yeah, why don't you? Why don't because you fucking I want wait it a little now. bit? I want it now. So fuck the family <laughs> that opened that store. Yeah. And by the way, fuck them that they used to think about what movies you might like. <laughs> that you might walk in and they go, Anthony, you like comedy. Anthony, we got a whole section for Do you. Do you even know Remember who that conversation Francois Tatia is? Right, right, and they'd right, right, show right. you something that we went and found this. Blockbuster <laughs> would never do that for you. I, fuck them. <laughs> I, I agree with both of you, but... So that you can uh, the, the local, save a little bit of fucking money. The local place that Ann's talking about, you had to wait for some asshole to bring back the nice new... Oh, it's, it's yeah, out. You'd be like, it's out. It's like, it's, well, when is it coming back? I want to watch that yeah, fucking so, thing. Again, and then Blockbuster fuck said, the fuck ability. that. The Blockbuster said, look, we could just put 100 copies mm -hmm. on the shelf. So you're thinking the, the whole uh, uh, loyalty thing should outweigh the convenience? Absolutely, because you're supporting somebody who... Who is there's a human being and a family who's living off that business and they give a shit about you. But given by the way, where's Blockbuster? It's I fucking know, gone. gone. So they leave a vacuum. Digital, you digital can't rent delivery a fucking now. video anymore. Yeah, but, but why would you? you digital if, delivery. If there was video stores, you know why? It's like bookstores. A mm. bookstore is not going just away a place too, where you can buy books. It's a place 
where somebody expresses themselves by deciding what books to put out there and what books they want to offer their community. Right. And that gets replaced by Barnes & Nobles, which means you get the same fucking books that every place in the world gets. I mean, not just America. Right. Everybody, every bookstore has exactly the same books now. I mean, yeah. that's a map. People don't realize what a massive... <laughs> it used to be, you go to that bookstore, you're going to get some weird off-color books different. of this kind, or right. you're going to get maybe a right-wing bookstore, a left-wing bookstore. That used to be how people fucking... <laughs> right. And yeah. then it's so, blo so Barnes & Nobles comes, and the difference is a family business will hang on through the tough years if they have half a chance. Yeah. But a, a corporate business will go, oh, we're making... We're not making a ten trillion dollars. Just pull up stakes, <laughs> and they're gone. Right. So now there's no more fucking bookstores. That's fucking amazing. Or, or uh, video stores. Yeah. No bookstores. No video stores. Right. The, yeah. The big Barnes Noble on the Upper West. But yeah, gone. because those are predatory gone. businesses. Given if, your thinking, though, wouldn't we never progress? Like, wouldn't who's the, progressing? That's the well. That's I, not mean, progressing. With, I mean, with everything. Like, wouldn't we? Not look at the automotive business, which yeah. is horrible now, of course, because of the outsourcing and everything. But early on, there were guys working those lines. Um, what about the technology to come in and use robots that did eliminate jobs, but it makes the car better and faster? And, and yeah, but and, that's exactly the thing. These things like bookstores and video stores, though, they weren't improved; they were destroyed. And, and and a book is not a car. It's not a product that needs to be perfected like a technology. It's about the oh, having a way of life. But now you just download it on Kindle. Yeah. Like no, it's... exactly. But it's rubbed out a whole getting out of your house and going to a bookstore, meeting the bookstore guy and other people. You used to get fucking laid by going to bookstores. <laughs> a way that people used to get laid is by going to a bookstore and standing in a section that makes you look smart. <laughs> and then a chick comes around. Yeah. Oh, do you also oh, like really? this book? Yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, no. I'm perusing hey. this. Yeah, uh, you can't do that there? anymore. When I grew up in Boston and there was a wow. place in Harvard Square called the Coffee Connection. And this was a place that was obsessed with coffee, and they had coffees from all around the world, and they'd have stuff like you'd get a you'd get uh, um, like a cappuccino, and they'd shave chocolate onto mm, it, just, not like a canister of chocolate powder. It, it took time. I mean, it's you, like, they had a yeah. cheese grater yeah. and a b block of chocolate, and they'd shred chocolate onto the fucking thing for you. That's like how good it was. You sound like, like my grandfather. No, my you, grandfather talking to me. You don't even understand no, the you have old no days. Idea. And <laughs> I know the you point is about to make, You'd man. go to the fucking coffee connection, right. and you'd sit there like trembling, <laughs> and they'd bring you this thing that would just change your life. Or they'd go, hey, you want to try Turkish? We have a new Turkish coffee today. It's a weird oh, that thing. Sounds good. Never yeah. tried it. So then Starbucks opens down the street, but this coffee connection hangs on. So Starbucks opens another one, like, on the other side of them. <laughs> Starbucks isn't doing so great that they can open another one. They're just trying to fucking kill. <laughs> oh, shit. So they open, like, five within a block of the place until coffee connection goes, this is getting hard. And they <laughs> sell themselves. They go, let's just yeah, be a Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so then Starbucks buys them and then closes the other ones, and then you're just left with fucking just one choice. You get and, Starbucks. And the quality of Starbucks is horrible. It's now. okay. And the it, instant it was Starbucks all right isn't making first... a profit, they'll yeah. give up, and then there won't be a fucking place to even get coffee. Right. Then we go yeah, back yeah. to having no coffee again. No yeah. coffee. He's right. So I remember wow, the yeah. I remember the lumber stores. Mm. I remember we did a lot of uh, oh, renovation on our lumber. old house because we had seven yeah. kids, small house, where so we were constantly adding rooms and this and that. Mom and pop lumber and shops. Mom and pop. Yeah, I would yeah. get in the car with my dad. I remember like it was yesterday. We go to the local uh, lumber guy. He knew my dad's first name. We got this for you. We made your pile. It's Putting all a dormer set. on the house, are you? And, and yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you're but gonna need some of that. No, don't. I'll come over here. I'll help you out. But it, you need that for the joists. But, mm -hmm. but there was a, it was a social thing, too, man. How yes. are the kids? And Lumber how stores are your were kids? Very and social. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, the Home Depot, it's a fucking massive warehouse, and no one wants to fucking help you. It's you're and just mad and right when you walk in. sad people working there. Right. Yeah. The, bu the buying of the lumber is not a happy exchange. It used to be that you could say <laughs> to yourself, you know what, if I get, if I invest in a good saw, and I and I get some trucks. I could go out and get some fucking poplar and cut it well, <laughs> and people will come here and build fucking houses with it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you go and you go, hey, you got some nice poplar, not as good as Joe Wilson's. Yeah. Right. Well, mine is down right. three cents. Right. Well, I'll buy yours then. This was like a. This yeah. was. A, and so by the way, we angles. don't improve through this shit. No. We actually don't. It's like, it's it's what happens is the more the second place product always wins by being more vicious. To. Yeah, like Microsoft the... versus Apple. Right. Microsoft 
is is bullshit software. It's hor- compared to Apple. I know, believe me, it's horrible. But Bill Gates is a capitalist, and he was vicious, and he fought Apple, and so for some years anyway. Yeah, yeah. America lived on shitty computer technology because of his. It was a point ambition. where we all thought Apple was gone. Yeah, it's VHS it first. VHS beta. versus beta. Beta yeah. is still used today. Yeah. Beta videotape is still what most TVs are, as TV shows are shot on. Yeah. And we all watched VHS tapes <laughs> because the VHS people said, we make the second best, so we're going to fu- be cutthroat and fucked up and, cr- and pay off people and uh, go to <laughs> litigation and like sue Beta. And Beta's like, we just, well, we're making the best kind. We can't even get people to buy it. <laughs> yeah. And so everyone gets VHS. Unbelievable. This is Tesla and fucking Edison. Edison it's always and Tesla, yeah. One guy's a genius and is selling a beautiful thing. The second place guy copies it, doesn't do it as well, and then takes him to court in every over. fucking state in America <laughs> <laughs> and muscles him and fights him and outdraws him. Credibility. Gets some fucking Texan to uh-huh. pay for it. And then uh, we all have to buy the shitty product. You're fucking brilliant. It's so true. That, it's the same with cars. They would be better if the, what you're saying was actually true. If it was like the guys still on the assembly no, line. Yeah. Or, you're, yeah. You're, but the, your coffee story is deeply depressing. It is what happens it was, everywhere. This, I was thinking as you were uh, talking about that, like the Starbucks popping up are like mm-hmm. weeds. Yes. Taking out the really nice fucking crop. Yeah, the nice that's flowers. what they do. They're, and they're, just, only they're interested just putting in the... weeds all over the place right. to destroy it. That's right. And they don't even make money. Like Harvard Square is a good example. I love of, Harvard Square. It's those been a while, but used, I love you won't that love place. it next time you go. It's been yeah. years. It's a, they used to be a place called the Tasty and like the Worst House, all these places that have been there from the 1900s. <laughs> it's a sunglass hut and an Abercrombie and Fitch now. Jesus. And I was talking to one of the local business guys who owns a cigar store. He's like the last guy left. <laughs> Look at you. No, I'm talking this shit to the local me. business man. I and I asked this. him, are you going to go under two? And he said, he, he said, you know what? Because he, he went to Harvard Business School and then he opened his little his cigar business. store. <laughs> oh, God. He said Abercrombie and Fitch and Harvard Square doesn't even make a profit. They lose money every day. They're not that store. It, the rent is so high for what they built there uh-huh. that they can't. If they could sell jeans all day. They're not going to make a profit. They're not there to make a profit. It's just a billboard. It's a 3D billboard. Oh, it's there so that you'll buy Abercrombie online and to keep it visible in your mind. In your yeah, head. yeah, that's yeah. fascinating. There's like the Nike store on 50th or what? All those stores they don't make a fucking dime. They lose money every sure. day. It's worth a, having a giant the global yeah. billboard. It's like a billboard. Yeah, that uh, you walk into. That's how far away this is from, like, the guy, mom and pop guy has guy. an idea, right. puts it out there, <laughs> I love this folks love it, and they start buying it. It's not even... Wow. It's not, we're not even close to that anymore. No. Like, I'm nostalgic for the guy who started Wendy's. Like, that's that's <laughs> now, like, a great American. He's, like, a revolutionary. A great American story. Yeah. Or, or Ray Kroc from McDonald's. Yeah, he's like the Shea little... Guevara or whatever his name is. Like, he, <laughs> ah, he's yes. like, oh, God, a great they're, man. They're sort of making a comeback. But remember, just the local uh, burger joint was cool. Are they making a comeback? A little bit. You, you see more burger joints popping up. Maybe they're a part of a whole corporate thing. But they, Well, like in New York, there's five guy burgers here. Right, right, right. But when we were growing up, the, every town had its local burger guy, yeah. and they, they bragged about their burger, and it was better yep. than the, the guy's mm. burger from the next town over. And, and then you watch those slowly. The one in Huntington, the Choo Choo Hamburger oh, right, place. Right. And their thing was... Well, we'll bring your burger on a nice fucking train right yeah. in front of you. Right. Oh, here comes my order. Train. You see it fucking rock in the restaurant. <laughs> yes. and it comes around and stops at your, pl- yeah. your you know, your your counter spot. Well, that's what and it that used thing, to be like when things were more spread out. That everyone had to have their own idea of here's right. what here's well, why you want to come here. And then I think yeah. instead of like if you come here, it doesn't matter because we're across the street too. Right. <laughs> Fuck you. Just eat this shit. You think it's gonna get better once these big companies take over? The product goes down. What do you they don't think have to about compete anymore. like online purchasing? Then you must do a lot of that, though. Yeah, I do. Yeah. No, I think that's prob that's probably the next version yep. of it is that you can throw together a little product and sell it online and just be the mom and you pop online yeah, thing. You don't need a store anymore, and then someone will f- figure out how to fuck that over. Yeah, oh, but yeah. you can't They'll because it's not real estate. You can't take over. You can't push somebody off the internet. Yeah, that's, they'll always be there. That's true, but you can no, be the better online. Yeah, they'll make or you the bigger and. They'll make you have the website with dot o r g. Yeah, <laughs> they'll give you Just a dot something find, that no right. one does. But if right. you're like a mom and Dark. pop thing and you're selling, let's say, electronics, or so, you'd be like, oh, great, they don't have that. 
let me go to Best Buy's website. Fucking and, no, that's and, absolutely true. That's hard yeah. hard to sell. Yeah. Just to add to the discussion, I used to be a big uh, music store guy, hmm. and every music store was a little different. And this guy, if yeah. you got to know him, he's like, I got some fucking bootlegs you might want to see. That's right. And it's completely illegal, oh, well, and we know it, but yeah. I've seen you in this place en enough times that I know you're not a rat, so why don't you follow me? Well, that's Remember exactly that it. it. Guys like, like Iggy Pop... Iggy Pop becoming popular was a good thing, I think, for America. It's a good yeah. thing for the American voice that guys like that would... But the reason he came up was because certain record stores would go, I'm fucking digging Iggy Pop, and I'm going to make a... I'm going to sort of take a gamble that my customers will like right, him. Right, right. So they'd, go, they'd order, like, give me 10 Iggy Pop, uh, you know, 12 inches, and they'd put them out there. Right. And the kid with the leather jacket, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> right. i try him out, kid. you all right, old man, fuck you, you know. <laughs> and he'd try Iggy Pop, and he'd go, holy motherfucking shit. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Iggy Pop yeah. is flying off the shelves. When I was growing but up. But now, if you're not on fucking iTunes, right. like, yes. the whole country has to make one decision of who we like. There's no sort of local guy. God, that's... Okay. It's that's a massive, massive difference in how Absolutely. the culture grows. I, I just loved when I was growing up. Go, I would go to the village and all those underground record stores. I would spend all afternoon there, and every yeah. place had something a little different. So what yeah. is this and bootleg like concert shirts it, and like? Well, you know what it does. Line of what this does. No to one society. even. No one even has even young people don't even consider the idea that it's a good idea to be off out in the fringe, which is where good ideas come from. Yeah, like people are almost like begging. The government to take over and the corporations to take over your life like people are excited that when you take a picture of yourself on your phone and put it online it says where the fuck you were <laughs> why are people yeah. excited about well, that yeah, what is that <laughs> like why? i remember when easy pass first happened yeah everyone was like i don't want oh, everybody man. knowing when i went to the lincoln tunnel <laughs> right. like what are you fucking carrying secret documents with <laughs> yeah, the fuck yeah. gives a shit about you right, right. but people used to think that way right cameras in the in Central Park for crime yeah but what about my privacy but now people are like guess what if I take a picture and send it to somebody the whole world knows exactly where I was where I was at that and given I can moment store that... all of everything I have on a computer in North Carolina I don't even have to <laughs> and they get to have all my stuff and Facebook knows who all my friends are and what I've said to all of them every single fucking conversation I've ever had is, is a public record in the fucking Library of Congress yeah Hey, cool! <laughs> that is fucked up. <laughs> Isn't that us? cool? And we worried about Easy Pass on mere yeah, three no, years ago. Yeah, I know. People were excited. Ago. Right. <laughs> it's everything cool. you tell somebody, I think I might be pregnant. It's in the Library of Congress now. now. It's forever. Cool. And there's a fucking geo tag on it saying where you were standing when you fucking said it. A, a fucking coordinate. Yeah. A, a global coordinate. <laughs> Of where you were standing and longitude. Why do people? Why would you want to say that? But we didn't want to use a picture. But we didn't want to use Easy Pass three years ago. Yeah, that is really fucked up. It is really fucked up. You have to belong to a fucking club to listen to a song. You have to have a credit card to like listen to a song. You can't go buy a record and play it. You have to. If you fucking lose your credibility. And your iTunes account gets suspended, you can't play any of your music you're, on anything. You're done. You can't listen now where it's on satellite radio. You have to subscribe <laughs> yes. to listen to the radio. Like the only way to listen to music without being a credible American citizen with a credit card at belonging to a corporation, the only way you can fucking whistle. That's about the only way. <laughs> That's how you're gonna hear the song. <laughs> That's the is only whistling to yourself. The only time you can, unless you want to join some. Yeah, because there are a lot of uh, the the music stores don't even carry fucking. It's no music stores. There's no it's, music stores. It's you like, got to go to Best Buy, yeah, and yeah. they got and their CD section, which is dying of. out. It's being pushed. Yeah, and it's just away. And it's just a reflection of what's on iTunes. Yeah, and what's you don't have. Yeah, yeah, Amazon. Nothing. You don't nothing have a guy taking there. care of that section, so it's all just kind of willy nilly. You're not just, finding something. It's Depressing, new and uh, eclectic. No, the problem, uh, there, yeah. and the problem is what Louis is getting at is with uh, corporate America. Only a few of the people in corporate America actually make the money. Then and everyone the else decision. is just slaves to that yep. fucking corporation. And they're not even American. I mean, it's all right. offshore. All the companies right. are unaccountable, and they're offshore. And most but, of them are foreign-owned anyway. And, yeah. Go with yeah. the Tower Records. Each Tower Records probably was easily ten, easily ten, you know, mom and pop record stores. Yep. And those yeah. guys were actually making a real living. And now, like you said about Atlantic City, Tower Records moves in, and now you used to make a living. Now you're just working for that schmuck. Yep. 
And then Tower Records less. is gone. Tower's so they gone. leave a vacuum. It's right. not even the, this idea that everybody's like, yeah, but come on, but that's this is good for what? It's the like, convenience is it's like locu- it's like locusts benefiting. <laughs> they right. just yes. come in, right. eat eat it all, and then they're gone, and right. nothing's left. And yeah, I know, but still, it's pro- you know, if we didn't do that, Progress. you wouldn't have the I, thing I, that uh, wouldn't I, have the polio vaccine. The cars run worse than they did in the seventies. <laughs> And I, I could go you back. You need a computer to fix one. <laughs> yeah, you can't work on your car. No. Anymore. That's true, too. You cannot pop the hood on your fucking car and, just, no. and work on it. Full I remember, I remember yeah. if your car stalled, you would you would you'd, you'd ease over to the uh, shoulder and uh, you lift the hood. Yeah, and tinker. And you'd fuck look, around with it. And you'd, exactly be like, right. you'd be like, all right, I know enough about the distributor. I think this yeah. is something. I think maybe. Let me see if that's tight. Yeah, I think it's tight. this a little my bit. Points, my I'm gonna points. I'm going to jiggle this touching. cord. Right? Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gap it with a matchbook cover. <laughs> you that'll get me home. do that. That'll get me home. It'll run a little fucked up, but that'll get me home. Yeah, you if could do that. If you knew where the fuel pump was, you could jiggle it a little bit. Yeah, give it a little knock. If you cart it and start this, you hit the starter a little bit. And, and then brewer. I had a '68 up. Mustang, and I used to fix. it. I worked in a garage when I was younger, and I used to fix it. So I like the like the, the the fuel pump would go like the fuel pump that was in there since 1968 <laughs> <laughs> died in like 1993, <laughs> and then I put in a new fuel pump, yeah. and that fuel pump died in 1995. <laughs> <laughs> and I went through three fuel pumps on that car. Same every part of it. Uh, the shit. starter that this car was ma- that was put in by some fucking heavy Michigan hands in 1968 when I was one year old. Some fucking guy with a cigarette dangling put that starter in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then went to a very beautiful home in Flint, Michigan, which uh, is now yes. a, a fucking crack house. <laughs> He's been dead for years. His white picket fence. His yes. wife was waiting for him to come home. And then finally, that starter that he fucking personally tightened every part of finally just went, I can't do it anymore, <laughs> and died in 1994. <laughs> yeah. And then I took it out, and it was heavy, and it was beautiful. It was like a piece of art. <laughs> yeah. And then I put it in with this, I put in this thing I got at a parts store. And I asked them, I, I said, give me the best starter that available and they gave me this starter, and the metal it was made out of is some weird composite. You could see, like, Coke can pieces in it. <laughs> and I put it in the way anything, and I stuck it in, and it lasted, like, six months. Yeah. And it just, bang, just came apart. <laughs> when you used to That's drop progress. the starter motor, it was like, when you when you oh. pulled those bolts out, yeah. gorgeous, it was uh, heavy. Yep. And then the new one, you hold it up with one arm as yeah. you're threading the fucking <laughs> look, bolt. Look at yeah. the, look at the you're right. Look at the picture Danny just found. You, you can't work <laughs> on that <laughs> engine. <laughs> you can't That's work what on you that see right. yep. Just a big block with a logo on it. Right. <laughs> That's, That's it. That's like, a Cadillac. It, it looks powered like it, by Cadillac. It looks like it just all melted together. You can't get at it. It's no, all just can't. cowling that they put on so you dare not even look and no. see what's under there. Uh, you can't work on it because it's all computerized. Now, if your car breaks you down, you hook a computer up to it in a yeah. corporate place. If it breaks down, you're lucky enough to get out of your own car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> might exactly. not even be lucky you out. Out. Right, you'd be lucky if you could at least leave the car. Yeah. Holy I shit. I keep going back to the coffee thing because uh, I, I was a big coffee guy as well. Yeah. And when Starbucks did hit, it made it convenient that there were more nice coffee place around because you really had to search them out like you're talking about right and i didn't live anywhere near harvard square so a starbucks was like nice instead mm-hmm. of shitty diner coffee right but then starbucks uh didn't care about their product in the end at no. first the coffee was amazing yes but you've watched it drop compete. over the years yeah they had to they uh, had to compete now you know the beans they're getting have to be just shitty yeah, of course they are they have to be it's they're just, not going to work hard st- for your money why would they they've got I it. At this first they needed my... your money so they worked hard for it exactly I explain this shit to my kids all the time because we will go off the beaten path. We'll go three blocks over and spend forty more cents. <laughs> that what are we doing with this precious money? That people are like, well, I'm saving so that I can buy some fucking video game, have a video game experience for ten seconds <laughs> that evaporates from my existence later. What are we saving the money for? But I we go a few blocks over, put, spend a few more cents to go to like a butcher. Yeah, yeah. Instead that, of going to, you know, that price chopper, we go to a fucking New York City butcher. Yeah. Where the guy's got a red face. How you doing, my man? And, it, you know, blood all over his fucking little yeah. apron that he's wearing. Gets his steak from his steaks from a fucking place where there's like a direct line from the cow to house, the steak. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, instead of this fucking shop right, you know, probably some human parts in the steak <laughs> thing. I, I was go, going to. Uh, like, somebody goes, oh, you want to get something for lunch? Let's go to, like, Subway or something. I'm like, 
why would you not just go to a deli like yeah. and get a real sandwich made on a, a hero roll that was in a bakery that morning and, yeah, exactly. and the driver took it over to the, a place where they're not going to measure the meat no, and it's I like, remember yeah, I was a, a pre, guy all pre-cut where the local guy goes oh sucks. Anthony you know you've been a good customer here's a few extra slices the yeah. subway it's they a, actually weigh their their yeah. meat and their yes. tomatoes to make sure Terrible. it's the proper weight I was in a subway once in somewhere in Arizona I was driving across the country and I stopped and it was a subway inside of a fucking Sunoco station. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh and boy. there was the fucking kid working there, it was this depressed looking kid with his that he cut his own hair like there was chunks. <laughs> cut his own hair. <laughs> skinny bored. fucking act just <laughs> yeah, depressed yeah. looking, pale American. And the kid he's serving is this exact same person. Oh, like shit. Like he's just barely just different colored version. <laughs> You know, like in Star Wars, there was R two D two, but then there'd be like a red version of it, <laughs> yeah, like the red R two D two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of basic. And one guy, and he's going, "What kind of sauce do you want on?" And he's like, "Um," and like, <laughs> I guess I'll get go ahead and get the the green one. And he's making it for him. And I wanted him to say, "Should I just eat it too? Does it even make yeah, a difference what? which one of us eats it?" <laughs> like everyone's just on one side of the counter or the uh, other. There's right, no identity right. to any American. No. The only identity you have is what your sauce choice is. Yeah. Like, that's the, the only damn. thing you get now is like, well, I like, I particularly like. You do make this grim two kind sauce. of image of, I, I don't see, I don't see this going to a good place. No, it's not, man. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. not. Man. No, it's not. not man. The only good thing that could happen is that it all falls. That it just all collapses. It all dies, and everyone has to look the around them and go, "What could I piece together?" Yeah, maybe, and sell? maybe recycle right, right. for my friends. Bit, maybe post-apocalyptic hey, yeah. lifestyle would kind be of terrific. A, yeah, we got a timing issue, so we're going to take a break because we got Rummy uh, calling oh, right at eight thirty. Oh boy, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> just Rummy. Oh, uh, Donald Rumsfeld. Can't wait. <laughs> His new book, Unknown, Known and Unknown, excuse me, a, a memoir. So you we're going to we'll know him. some of the unknown? I ain't you think no, he's going to no, fess I, with the unknown? I'm you know, I'm going to go word. ahead and tell those Opie and Anthony fellas stuff yeah. that I never gonna... told anybody. <laughs> <laughs> There's the show I'm going to break all the news yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, more with Louis C.K. Just... That was a good time as any to tell him that <laughs> Gerald Ford is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not these guys? Why don't, we ask him, why don't we ask him that weird shit, then? <laughs> See what he says. Yeah, but Roswell, uh, yeah. Louis killing, killing this morning, and oh, uh, Louis C.K. is going to be at the Borgata April 23rd. For tickets, go to Borgata.com, B-O-R-G-A-R-T. No, that's not it. What? They misspelled the website, right? That's awesome. Borgata. Bor it, there's no R in the end of Borgata, right? Borgata. Or Google yeah, it. No, it's B-O-R-G-A-T-A.com for tickets you know for Louis C.K. If you just... You have a computer to go online, right? Right. Just Google the fucking yeah, thing. Yeah, Borgata. Like, I never Does understand. anybody like, need to know the website? How do you website? spell it, like, really kind of... Anything you uh, can't spell, even the, just throw it in. The browsers, finally, you just put it in the URL. Right, Someone right. figured out these yeah. fucking people don't yeah. get it. They said, hey, dummy, <laughs> yeah. this is how it's really spelled. Yeah. Just write it with your finger on the screen. And <laughs> right, we'll up. figure it out. I don't even use, like, dictionary.com no. or, like, Miriam website. I'll just go to Google, type in the word that I'm, I know I'm misspelling. Yes. And it says, did you mean the correct spelling? Now you know the correct... Now I know. Yeah. And you don't even need to know anymore. it. You yeah, can continue spelling it wrong after that. You know, you yeah. used Doesn't to matter. have to go to a library and speak to the librarian about that. <laughs> That's right. And uh, she would uh, direct you to a book. That's well, right. Libraries you used out. to be kind of cool, too. Man. Libraries. In New York, it's very that. different. It's just the, that's where homeless people shit now. Do you, yes. library. Oh, speaking of which, we got the bench story. Oh, uh, yes. Right. With the and drugs it's, and the sex. Uh, uh, one, one last thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, encyclopedias. The house that had the encyclopedias. But then they would become dated so quickly that uh, a few short years later, you know, borders move and people take over power. And, yeah. and you just read these encyclopedias. But that was like your internet. That's that right. Was, uh, the only information you were able to get... At the drop of a hat was in your encyclopedias in your house. You used to sit there and toil if you didn't know something and couldn't find it out in your house through some kind of book or well, newspaper. By the way, where, you didn't know it. Where this stuff is good is things like the internet, because if you lived in you know um, Oshkosh, Michigan, or someplace, you weren't going to get a cool book. You weren't going to yeah, get Alice yeah. Doesn't Live Here Anymore, and you weren't going to get an Iggy Pop album. Right. You were going to get a Pat Boone album <laughs> and whatever, and Encyclopedia Britannica. That's Britannica. it. You had to live on that. Yeah. yeah. 
We you know, but hey, you, you throw on a leather jacket and leave town. You fucking, what's <laughs> yeah, your problem? Yeah. Get Louis, off the you farm. stay in your house? Get off the farm. Louis, just great uh, social commentary today. Holy I shit. Love it. You opened my eyes to a bunch of shit. <laughs> uh, quick break. Donald Rumsfeld next. Stay there. Serious XM. The virus. This is the OP and Anthony Show. OP and Anthony Show. We got to go right to the phone. Oh, my God. Turn that music down. And welcome Donald Rumsfeld to the Opie and Anthony Show. Sir? Hello, sir? Yes, indeed. How are you? Very good. Very good. What a pleasure to talk to you. Okay. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld's new book, Known and Unknown, a memoir. Uh, I've been looking through this. Fascinating stuff because, uh, you, boy, you have been a part of history in this country for uh, many years, known many presidents. Uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Rumsfeld. Well, thank you. It's a little embarrassing to discover that I've lived one-third of the history of our country. One-third Third. the wow. history. And, and been involved in uh, a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of things that have gone on through history. Very Indeed. Important. I want to mention that all the proceeds that I receive from the book are going to go to the troops and their families. Oh, that's oh. nice. I thought what you were going to mention good. was uh, you know exactly where we live and to be nice. Oh, we uh, are. <laughs> Opie. It's not. Uh, where, where where are you right now? Are you just at home? No, I'm in New York City. Oh, okay. Uh, last night I was on the John Stewart show. Right. Mm. There was a. How, how did that go? Because John is a little uh, liberal, I would say. <laughs> well, he he comes at things from that direction, but he is very smart, very quick. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a good discussion. I was pleased to be there. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever been interviewed where you got upset with how it went, and then actually did anything to exact revenge on the person? Never. Why would he do that, Louis? No, that's Louis C.K. Because you, you know, if you're a man of power, it's got to be an interesting thought, at least. I well, could... no. What 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 you do is you think to yourself, what might I have done differently? You've got to expect people to come at you because in our co wonderful country, everyone can have their own opinion, and goodness knows that it, it, they can have intense opinions. But mm -hmm. I find that if they have intense opinions that are opposite to mine, there's an awful lot of people who have intense opinions that are very much like mine. Mm -hmm. Now, you you have been in front of a lot of uh, the press over the years. And uh, you, you've learned how to kind of deflect uh, certain questions and uh, handle uh, uh, the press. So I guess interviews are pretty easy for you? Well, I enjoy it. I think it's important that people, you know, put their views out there so that we have a competition of ideas and, and the American people can sift through it and make their own judgments. Yeah, absolutely. When, uh, when did you first get inside and and by inside, I mean, you know, the kind of inner circle of power in uh, uh, the government, especially during the Cold War. Um, when did you just go from a, a, a military guy into becoming uh, kind of an enigma, kind of a, a person of power and, and on the inside? When How did that happen? Well, you know, I don't have any idea. I was a Navy pilot. Oh, <clears throat> I knocked on doors, got a job working for a congressman in Washington. I'd never met a congressman. And then I ran for Congress and served during the Kennedy and Johnson era. And then I was in Nixon's cabinet and Ford's cabinet and worked for Reagan as a special envoy to the Middle East and then uh, George W. Bush's cabinet. Just It just kind of all happened over the decades, and suddenly I'm 78 years old. <laughs> but so how, you, like, how much, how does it feel to have, you've probably accumulated a lot of things that you know that you'll never tell anybody on the planet Earth, right? Well, you know, not really. Uh, I, I'm interested in history. I love to read bi <clears throat> biographies, which is one of the reasons I took four years and wrote the book and tried to discuss what it was like being inside and, mm -hmm. and how the decisions are made and how complicated they are when they reach the senior levels of government. I also created a website, Rumsfeld.com, where we've put hundreds of, of documents, thousands of pages mm. uh, from throughout my life so that people can read them and, and check things in the book. For example, if I quote a paragraph off a memo in the book, you can go to the website and read the whole memo. Oh, okay. But you must have lived moments where you were like, holy cow, no one but me and these two people are ever going to know this happened. And it had a massive impact on history. Well, there certainly are times like that. But over time, almost everything comes out. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, there are moments when what's going on inside the White House is, is very sensitive and very private. 
Uh, but but within any reasonable period of time, the, the, the much of what goes on becomes public, and the American people look at it. Yeah. Do you do you look at uh, how do you see your your legacy um, based on on your your career with George W. Bush? Uh, do you see yourself as a fall guy? Do you see yourself as um, somebody looked upon uh, as evil? Uh, and and do you think it affects what you've done before that? Because I I see you as a very patriotic uh, uh, guy that uh, served his country well and and still does. Uh, but some people, uh, based especially on your experience with uh, George W. Bush, see you as a uh, you know an evil guy. Uh, how do you how do you accept that? Well, you know I I know who I am. I know what I've done, and one of the reasons I I've wrote the book was to try to get out there what the arguments pro and con were so people can look at them. And uh, I, I've taken on tough jobs. I've had to make tough decisions. And um, when you do that, you can expect people are going to disagree strongly. Uh, I, I, it doesn't come as a great surprise to me, I suppose, having lived so many decades. Yeah. Were you disappointed, though, with the way uh, your uh, career ended with George W. Bush's uh, administration? No, I think he made the right decision, and I made the right decision. I think once one of the houses of Congress went to the other party, the next two years would have been hearings, and you know, people would have tried to go after the Bush administration through me, mm -hmm. and and I I decided it would be better for the military, better for the Pentagon, better for the president and the administration if I left. And President and I were very much in agreement. But doesn't that kind of leave you hanging out to dry? Is what I'm saying, and 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 looking bad, like you did something very wrong. No, I don't feel that way, and I don't think history will suggest that, and mm -hmm. I don't think that serious people interested in what went on who go to the website and read the book carefully will feel that way. I yeah. think these are complicated issues, and, and um, we took on tough jobs. We, we spent every waking moment trying to protect the American people, and we put in place some structures that, lo and behold, almost a decade later, there's not been another successful attack on America. Now that's worth something, and I think I, I agree. I agree with you. And uh, uh, the the book uh, "Known and Unknown: A Memoir" by Donald Rumsfeld, uh, it's it's out there. And and uh, you, does this kind of open up who you are as a person? Because I think I don't think people really know you as a person. They see you and have seen you um, at press conferences and whatnot, and kind of see you as um, I don't know, a very mysterious uh, guy. And that kind of scares people. Well, I don't feel mysterious. I think what you see is what you get, and and uh, I think that that the book it does open up my life, my family life, my circumstance, where I came from, from a small town in Illinois. Went to college on a scholarship, and uh, was a wrestler, and a person who who loves the country and is so grateful to to have had so many opportunities to serve. It's interesting though, because there are people who think. I mean, here's a guy who. Were, you know, met Eisenhower as a congressman, right? I was running for Congress, exactly. And, and you know, worked for Ford and Nixon and Reagan and both Bushes. And there's still those people out there that think, you know, Rumsfeld and Dick Cheney are l actually lizards <laughs> who, I mean, literally, there's people that think they're lizards from outer space. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Who eat human flesh. I don't know if anybody's ever asked you directly, sir, but are you, are you a lizard? <laughs> I don't think are you a lizard. Can you just please give that a straight answer? <laughs> are you a lizard person? Louis, a little Let him left answer. leaning, No, sir. I'm not. I'm not. Here's Let him answer. answer. Are you a lizard? Here's the short answer. Yeah. I'm in New York City. I walk down the street, people walk up, shake hands, stop me, they want an autograph, I want to get a photograph with me, go to eat last uh -huh. night at dinner, and Joyce and I were sitting there in the little Italian restaurant, <laughs> and, and a man came he up and said he'd lizard. like to buy my dinner, and, I yeah. and, and it turns out I paid for my dinner, the next thing I know, the waiter comes back and said, the man insisted to pay for your dinner, uh -huh. and here's your canceled receipt for Ooh. paying. Oh, wow, that's See, nice. there's plenty of people that... <laughs> but he's just... He, you didn't answer the question. He's that not was... going to dignify. I, I think you're with the wrong people. He's not going to dignify an answer to, he, are you a lizard, Louis? Why not? He because he's no. not a lizard. What is the story about getting somebody paid for your dinner? Have to, I would pay because for a lizard's he, dinner. I, I think I understood the fact that there are people out there.
out there that appreciate what he's done no, as, uh, totally. as a leader. And, there and, is plenty of evidence that this guy is a well-decorated and yes. appreciated American. And he has more credibility than almost anybody. Exactly. But I just want to know if he's a lizard. <laughs> he's not a lizard. Stop it. I'm, I want to apologize, uh, Mr. Rumsfeld. Louis C.K. is a stand-up comedian, and I do not share his ideology uh, one iota. Matter of fact, we're meeting him for the first time. We don't even really know yes. him. Yes. So we apologize. <laughs> exactly. It's usually just me and Anthony. Exactly. But we said, what the hell, we'll try out this local uh, comedy. Mr. Rumsfeld, I want to ask you a little bit about the situation that's going on now in the Middle East. You are an envoy to the Middle East. Uh, what do you see happening there? Uh, what's What's your take on the whole situation? Well, I think what's happening is is that uh, we had good relations with many of the governments in there, uh, in that region, and it was contributing to a stable situation with respect to the generally hostile attitude towards Israel because an important country like Egypt had a peace treaty with Israel, and, mm. and that was a, a valuable thing that Sadat did and, and Mubarak stuck with. The problem is that those countries did not move towards freer political systems and freer economic systems mm -hmm. as rapidly as they should have. And, and the people are looking for opportunities. Very large populations that are young, and they don't have jobs, and they don't see opportunities, and they look around the world on television or, or Facebook or something, and they see other countries where people are doing well, and, and they become dissatisfied. So you mm -hmm. have these kinds of of turmoil and, and popular revolutions. Now, the problem is that, uh, take Lebanon, for example, there was a popular revolution. Yeah, the Hamas uh, wound up. Hezbollah ended there. up taking yeah. over yeah. and a sure. terrorist organization and, and repressive. Right. Uh, the same thing in Iran. Now, uh, are, are, isn't that a worry? Like, uh, especially when you have a revolution as they did in. Uh, in uh, Egypt, uh, not a revolution, but, you know, protest, whatever you want to call it, the guy's gone, uh, without having a, 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 another guy to, to put in there, um, isn't there a worry as the, uh, uh, America as to who's going to be there and, and uh, what kind of government's going to be in place? Absolutely. It, it, everyone ought to be concerned, not just our country, but Europe and Israel and, and the neighboring countries. If, if uh, The problem is that, that you can have a popular protest and revolution and and the winner is not the people that are looking for greater opportunity the winner often is the most a minority group that yeah. is very disciplined very well organized and very vicious Listen, like like Hezbollah in Lebanon and or like the ayatollahs in Iran yeah so you could get the muslim brotherhood Oh, that doesn't sound radical good. Radical extremists. Exactly. Uh, over Egypt, which would be terribly dangerous. Absolutely. Listen, and these are great questions, Anthony, and yeah. they're questions that this that Mr. Rumsfeld is going to answer better than almost anybody in the world. Yeah. But they. But he, I still want to know if he's a lizard. <laughs> and if he is. Stop it. If he's tasted human flesh. No, stop. I just want to know. Mr. Rumsfeld, again, I want to apologize for Louis C.K. He's a stand-up comedian. He's playing at the Borgata. Uh, it's a legitimate Look, um, if he's no, a lizard who has eaten people, don't, don't encourage him. He'll it'll just make him worse. See, and, 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 and I will it stop has, the Mr. second Rumsfeld. I get a denial. I'll stop asking. <laughs> he, he, tell, tell tell Louis that my grandchildren are listening. See, oh, well, listen, they are, are, they have a right to know too. <laughs> no, he's not a lizard, <laughs> and he's not tasted and, human flesh. But well, you're he answering. Is, That's easy for I you to say. I can answer because I know the guy is a, a great American, a great patriot. Yes, he's I done, totally agree with he's that. He's done great things for this country. And uh, uh, yes, Anthony, is he a lizard? Is Dick no, Cheney a lizard? Have no, they they're not. They are people. Any Mexican babies? Have they eaten no, any human beings? Stop it. Stop it. I know. Mr. Rumsfeld, I apologize. He, he, Louis C.K. I is, paid for this microphone, mister. He's I want to an answer. Funny. Um, I, I, I don't understand it. Where, where do you see the uh, you Where do you see the 2012 what? elections going? Do you, do you see the uh, Republicans taking the White House again? Uh, and who do you see as maybe a, a good front runner for the Republicans? You know, I don't think there is one. I think it's one of those rare times when there's not an incumbent president running and there's not a vice president running and there's not an obvious person. And yeah. I think what we ought to do is watch them run around the track a while and see how they handle things. It's, it's a tough job, as mm -hmm. President Obama's finding out. It's a lot easier to, uh, to campaign. Than exactly. To. And uh, so I think we ought to watch all these candidates. There's some terrific ones running, and I think some of them have executive experience. Some of them have a lot of legislative experience. And, and see how they handle. Because what's going to happen is they're going to get asked tough questions. 
Mm-hmm. They're going to get put in difficult positions, and we're going to then be able to see how their brains work, how they react, how they handle things, what kind of people they recruit for their campaign team, how effective they are in organizing. And all of those are attributes that are helpful for a president. Before be- the Lizard Council meets all right, and decides Louis. who to appoint. The Lizard Council doesn't appoint a president. And he's not part of the Lizard if Council. If they do, don't you want to know? Uh, no, no. Don't you at least want to give him a chance the, to say, no, I'm not a lizard? I don't want to picture Donald Rumsfeld on the other end of this phone Nobody listening does. to you asking with red lizard, lizard eyes. No, he's not. With red. Mr. Rumsfeld, um, uh, uh, oh. again, with, uh, with uh, 2012 uh, elections, really wouldn't... Yeah. Wouldn't it be good to, and I always wonder why this doesn't happen sooner, to start really grooming a good candidate now? Uh, they always seem, uh, the Republicans always seem to wait till the last minute um, to really kind of get together and, and get a candidate there, a viable candidate that could take on uh, uh, a Democrat, especially an incumbent. Well, I think that's true of both political parties. If you think back to the Democratic primary uh, that, that Mr. Obama won, uh, and I think the reason for that is there's no senior council of of uh, leading Lizards. Democrats or leading Republicans who can go into a smoke-filled room and start grooming somebody. Uh, it's the American people and the parties, that, the people of each party that end up picking these candidates. But it, it does seem like it would be a lot... Uh a lot more advantageous, especially for the for the party, if they would kind of work together instead of everybody trying to get their piece uh, of, of of the presidency, or, uh, to just work together and get get a candidate, uh, a viable candidate to run um, that would really have a shot at winning. Well, and of course, a primary process can produce a mistake, and you could end up with a candidate who's not very good. Exactly, and I don't think we want to see that. I I definitely don't want to see another four years of uh, Barack Obama. Uh, no, I know. That's for sure. Incumbents, ha- uh, you know, often get reelected. And I think the Republicans are going to have to be careful not to overreach and, and to manage their affairs in a way that, that are responsible and yet address what the American people really care about. Mm-hmm. And my goodness, uh, this, this administration has served up a number of targets. H- how anyone can think that the budget President Obama put forward is responsible is beyond me. Yeah. The debt in this country is crushing, and it's going to damage this generation and future generations unless people have the courage to step up and deal with it. What was it like when you met? There's a picture of you shaking hands with Saddam Hussein. Like, what was that day like? The day you met that dude. Oh, that famous picture. The dude who yes. later, later was hung in a badly lit room. I tried to tell Louis that that was indeed during the time when he that was. That does not. Just curious what that and, day was and, like. And was okay. I'm just All curious. Right. What was that uh, like to enough. meet that fella? Fair enough. Well, it was, it was, uh, I was in Baghdad at the request of President Reagan, and I, I kind of descri- describe this in my book. Uh, I met the night before with Tariq Assis, the deputy uh, prime minister, and then the next morning I, I was invited in to be with Saddam Hussein. And the reason that Secretary Schultz and President Reagan and I all agreed that it made sense was uh, Saddam Hussein was in a war with Iran mm-hmm. and had taken our embassy people hostage. And, and was very hostile to the United States. The oh. United States did not have diplomatic relations with Iraq, and uh, the thought was that, that we, you know, the old adage, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Right. How did we manage to get crossways with the two big countries in that region, both of them, and yet they were hostile to each other? Right. So we felt that, that it was a good idea to see if we could reestablish relations, and that ultimately was done shortly after my visit. P- now, yeah. what was it like? You walk in, there's a Middle Eastern despot. Is yeah. he a good guy or a Democrat? No. He's a, he's a, a thug, <laughs> and he's in fatigues, and he's got a pistol on his hip, and he's a Just tough guy and not me. a good guy. Mm. Uh, on yeah. the other hand, people in Iran were worse, and, and when you get up in the morning and look around the world, you know, there are a lot of not, not a lot of George Washingtons or Abraham Lincolns. We have to deal with people who aren't perfect on occasion. Exactly. That's uh, what I was trying to tell Louis. And then, so how many guys do you think you've met that died by hanging? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Good question. Um, yeah, more than one. Yeah. More than one. <laughs> more than once. Eh? Yeah. I've never met anybody who, I met a girl who hung herself.
He's had, but I've never met anybody who was sentenced to hang. He's, he's had to deal with thugs during his career at some point. Sure. He's, uh, you know, sure. the, the world. And a lot of people judge things, I've noticed, Mr. Rumsfeld. A lot of people judge things based on what's going on now. They don't take it in the context of the history and what was going on at the time. Now, uh, during the Cold War... I think we were willing, as Americans and the press, to accept a lot more covert action uh, on the part of the government for our own safety uh, than we are now. Uh, do you think that's a better thing, that there's so much more information available now? Or, or is it a kind of a good thing for the government to have maybe a little bit of um, a little more uh, 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 covertness in their uh, actions? Oh, I think you're right. I think that we, we live in a world where there are relatively few countries that maybe are like we are. Balls. Mm -hmm. We have free political yes. systems, and, and, uh, and that means that we have got to have uh, intelligence gathering activities if we're going to protect the American people. Exactly. But what, like, hey, American safety is like the biggest deal to us. American defense, we've got to keep the American people safe. But how many, but what if a whole lot of people in other places have to die in order for us to be safe? Like, what if you found out that a lot of America was going to get hurt unless we just took France? And just wiped it out. <laughs> That's a, would you trade on. France? Hypothetical. Would you trade France for for Texas and Arizona? <laughs> Can you imagine if I answered that question? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But the Thank new you. lead would be <laughs> exactly. It, it would be like the, the answering your earlier question, where I would deny that I'm something that you asked. Right. Me. He's not going to deny he's, he's a still, lizard, but he hasn't officially denied. What it. would we? What would be hurt by denying that you're a lizard? <laughs> I, I did not just arrive in town falling off a turnip. <laughs> <laughs> there are no turnip carts in New York City. <laughs> well, he didn't fall off. Of one no, I totally understand. But no, that's fascinating to me. What would be hurt by den and I'm not going to ask you to deny it now. I'm more interested in what would be hurt if you denied that you're a lizard. It's justifying the sorry, question. Sorry, I brought it up. I apologize. But, but, no, but, but no. I mean, we like to think that we're a comedy show, so we're just kind of asking a, a, but, a but silly I question. But that there, is Mr. fascinating Rumpstop. to me that if that saying I am not a lizard might be dangerous. But I want to know how it might hurt. Sure. Wait, how would it hurt your credibility? This happened. How did this happen? There's a guy laughing in the I background know. that is looking up our addresses. Now. Mr. Mr. Rumsfeld, notice that Anthony Cumia is uh, a I true am, patriot. I am right behind you. I love your book, uh, Donald Rumsfeld, known and unknown uh, memoir uh, in bookstores. Now this thing uh, really flying off the shelves too. I want to I want to ask uh, Mr. Rumsfeld uh, his opinion on the unions right now. That's a big topic right out yes. there. Well, it is, and, and what we've got is a government, uh, an administration, that, according to the data, has fewer people who've ever been in business than any administration in modern history. And what you've got is a lot of people who are lawyers and, and professional government people, and we, they don't have the, the business background. They have very close connections to the unions, and, and I'm terribly worried about the, the way that our uh, trade relations are going around the country. We, we are the president and the administration have been responding to pressure from the unions with respect to the trade deal with South Korea, the trade agreement with Colombia. Here's Colombia, an important country in our hemisphere, and and we've been stiffing them and and not. We're missing what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. in, in Asia, there are all kinds of trade agreements, and the United States is absent without leave. We're, we're not engaged in doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think the answer is it's because of the unions. And we're, we're at a first point in our country's history where there are more union members who are government employees than there are who are in the private sector. That's a conflict, if you ask me. Well, it's a worry. There's yeah. And I think it's also not surprising, then, to note that the average pay of government employees is now higher than in the private sector. That's uh, that's not right. And of course, that right. Is why is that right. not right? What's because it should it should be the other way around. Well, of course, where teachers are government the, employees, the, right? And the jobs and the products Sometimes. and the opportunities yeah. are all in the private sector, not in government. Right. But uh, a teacher is a public employee, right? Is a unionized public employee. Yes. So they should be paid well, right? But it's not a matter of being paid well. Or, but they should have the power to cut, get together and uh, bargain for better pay and better benefits, right? Well, if you look around at the school systems, uh, they are in trouble. And, and they're not providing the kind of education for kids. And, and um, so the system isn't, isn't working perfectly. Mm -hmm. 
My wife, Joyce, started the Chicago Foundation for Education because the Chicago school system was described as the worst school system in America some years, 25 years ago. Wow. And, and, and that's, here's a great city, a wonderful city. And, and it had a school system that the Secretary of Education labeled the worst. Now, why is that? Uh, it isn't because people are bad. It's because the process isn't working. There wasn't any choice. People didn't have a choice. They, they paid their taxes, and they had to go to school in their neighborhood, and, and they didn't have choice. I'm a Milton Friedman fan. I think giving school vouchers uh, so that people can, parents and kids can make those choices, and pretty soon the schools that nobody wants to choose have to disappear, and the schools where people want to go mm-hmm. succeed because they get a good education, they prosper. Yeah, but American public schools used to be great, and now they're not. So for years and years, they did well without vouchers and charter schools, and then all of a sudden, money got taken out of those systems, and now they're suffering. And then the people that took the money out point at the system and go, ha ha, you suck because I took your money away. So now no. we're going to. So what happened? Why, why, why did they work before? I don't think that's the case. What you just said. I don't think that the, the reason the schools are not doing well today is because the money's not there. I think that you look at the average price that, that we're paying per, per student or, or per school, and it's quite high. It, it just isn't producing the kind of results that a more competitive system would. Mm-hmm. How come it worked before, though? When it was simpler, public, most people went to public schools and you could just go walk down your public school and get a great education. Like, how come there's a decline when it was working without the competition? I think probably it was a result of the fact that we were uh, um, uh, more of a rural country. We we had much more parental involvement. Uh, There was more uh, smaller elements, and and then as we became more of an urbanized uh, country, uh, the the there was more distance between parents and the schools, more distance between. A government in the schools, and and uh, they just deteriorate. And teaching the basics of what people need to know, instead of uh, a lot of political so correct uh, uh, like, gibberish. Really, you think that that's are in what the schools you think now? That's what hurt the I schools? believe that Louis is teaching evolution. I, that's what hurt no, the schools. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I just think that there's a lot going on in schools that have has nothing to do with educating the students and preparing mm. them for life. Mm. I could be wrong, but I think there might have been one other thing. You know, mm. for years we had the draft. And uh, we excluded people from the draft who were students, teachers, or married. And as a result, people who did not want to serve in the military kind of gravitated to getting married or having, uh, becoming a teacher or becoming a student. And so over time, you had a, a bifurcation of a generation. And, mm. and that group is now just about retiring. Because right. The all the all volunteer military came in under the Nixon administration in the late 1960s and early 1970s, and and so all of those people that were up to 1970 now, of course, would be 30, 40 years later. So if they became teachers in in the ages of 20, 25, 30, uh, they'd now be retiring. Yeah. Hey, did, I, did he answer the question about unions? Are you for or against the the you, unions, sir? What do you mean? Uh, I, I, I've got no problem with unions. Yeah. What I have a problem with is, is, is if unions end up exerting an undue influence uh, in what's taking place in our country and, and stopping the United States of America from participating in free trade agreements around the world, which are the kinds of things that help to create jobs. Yeah, that's not a good thing. But if the yeah. jobs are in other places yeah. and what, I mean, if the United States is getting to compete, who is the United States at that point? Is it General Electric and and uh you know walmart or is it actual people who live in these places like wisconsin who are asking to be able to sue for their own rights as a union well you are know you a I, I, if the governor up there i'm not knowledgeable about wisconsin uh, i'm from new mexico as the cover of my book shows uh <laughs> right. no you got a fle- yes. polar fleece on that the, a handsome picture but my recollection is that the governor ran on a platform of doing exactly what he's doing, addressing the fact that the state is bankrupt. And, and, and how does he fix that? Well, he can't fix it if the unions won't let him. And yeah. he's going to have to find a way to, to put that state on an upward path rather than allowing it continue mm. to go down, spending more than they take in. Exactly. And uh, if the unions are going to try to prevent that, 
uh, he has to do something about that. I, I got an observation. Uh, you sound just like Dr. Demento. What? Who's Dr. That? Demento? Someone's going to appreciate that out Why, there. Somebody the Funny Five. Oh, the guy used to do the it. funny radio thing. Yes, you Met got the exact same voice. Well, uh, he's got sorry. a very distinctive voice. I know uh, uh, yeah. you, could, you could always tell Donald Rumsfeld when he was on the TV, right. uh, even from the other room. You have a very strong, distinct voice. I, I have a couple of questions just out of curiosity <laughs> I want to ask you. Uh, Mr. Rumsfeld, what type of aircraft did you fly? I was flying, the last plane I flew was an S2F, which was a, a Grumman uh, anti-submarine plane. Oh, that's cool. Did, your, did you have more capability to fly it because of your lizard reflexes? Stop it. <laughs> it is a... I've got a thought for you. Yeah. Okay, good. I hope you're looking for uh, a, a, a present for, for friends of yours. I spent eight days recording the unabridged version of my book. Oh. About eight hours a day, and if if you want to hear the voice and the voice, right? What you do is you you buy the unabridged version of the book, mm -hmm. and then you can play it in your car when you're going to and from work, and I'll be right there with you. I think you need that, Louie. Yeah. I'll be right there with you. You absolutely do. I want to ask you one more thing because I know you got to go soon. Um, uh, I'm a very, very strong advocate of the Second Amendment. Uh, I'm a lifetime member of the NRA. Are you are you a member of the NRA? I, I'm not sure if I am right now. I have been, and oh. I think I am. And uh, are you an avid shooter? Because uh, I, I am, and I love it. I'm, uh, I have guns. I have rifles and shotguns and pistols and yeah. at various locations, and I'm, I'm an elk hunter out in New Mexico. So you're have, a strong you advocate ever, of the Second Amendment, as I am, sir? Have you ever, shot a, yeah. have you ever shot a person? No. No. That's a great question. No. Yeah, I think that. everybody should be asked that. No one else shot <laughs> have you a ever person. Shot some? He was the Secretary terrible. of Defense. He was in charge of everybody that America killed for a very long time. Oh, stop I've, it. I've been uh, shot at. Does that count? He's been shot at. That's I was crazy. Next to President Ford when the bullet went right by his head and right by my head into the hotel in San Francisco. Wow. wow. Yeah. That I was that crazy. Were you yeah. ever shot at with Manson any brought. other besides bullets, like plasma rays or anything else <laughs> no, that are no used space to take down? Would you stop it, Louie? Flesh-eating space lizards. My God, man. Uh, who eat the poor. Donald Rumsfeld, known and unknown, a memoir. I suggest anybody that's interested in uh, the history of this fine country and, and the history of a, a patriot and this fine man, go out and buy this book. Thank you, uh, Donald Rumsfeld. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy being with you. I'm pretty sure you're a Thanks, lizard. Thanks, sir. He's not a lizard. Stop it. Pretty Thank sure you, he sir. Ate people once. You <laughs> select your your partners carefully. Yeah, I, yeah I'm, we, trying. Yes. I'm trying. I'm trying, right. sir. Come Thank see me at you. the Poor God in Atlantic City on April 23rd. <laughs> He's it's just, almost sold out. Just a local comic, sir, that we really don't know much about. Yeah, I don't know. He'll be him. gone tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Donald Rumsfeld, everyone. There he is, Donald Rumsfeld. <laughs> uh, <laughs> quick, hang up the phone. Oh my God. Oh my dear sweet Jesus. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't let him answer. Why? Would why did you not, keep? Because he wasn't ever going to answer. <laughs> why not just at least, not? At say least I'm not a lizard. hear his not answering? At least he hear did. the silence he of not answering. He said <laughs> I wouldn't answer that because I didn't get the, to hear because you kept talking with other questions over I'm him not, not answering. Sit there and listen to the, the former Secretary of Defense try to defend that he's not a lizard. <laughs> why? 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 why wouldn't you? Why? Because why wouldn't you want to live that moment? Because first of all, he's not a lizard. Why Secondly, do you want to be baby CNN? <laughs> Instead of the only show that finally got the guy to say, okay, look, I'm going to finally say something about this lizard shit. <laughs> not I'm tired of hearing it. I'm not a lizard, per se. No. He said he wasn't going to dignify it. He said he's if he said yes that or no. That could have been a recording, what we just... He could have just... It could have been a dude wasn't playing like those, like those prank calls. No, it was Donald it Rumsfeld. It could have just... <laughs> But the thing got interesting when we asked him if he was lizard. It put a hitch in his giddy up. You know what? He handled it, it like a gentleman and like a professional. <laughs> he handled it like a lizard who knows how to never answer. No. He said, I'm not going to answer. Did you hear at one point, and I wish you'd almost play it back, the first time I asked it and he told that fucking psychotic story <laughs> it was a about a friend, uh, some guy buying him dinner? Because and, then, and then he said, you're messing with the wrong people. He said that. Go back and play it. And then he bought me dinner. You're messing with the wrong people. And then I swear <laughs> to God, he said it. 
See, go find that and play it back. But it was because he was saying how people do find him fine and and a great. So what is person that? Why does that mean? I'm messing with the wrong people unless he's trying I don't to tell know me kind of subliminal that I'm not going to make it home tonight. Maybe he was throwing a subliminal thing out like you threw a subliminal lizard out in the middle of his discussion. I, it was not subliminal. It was quite direct. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I paid him respect. I said, you totally are this guy who's done these amazing things. I just want to know if you and Dick Cheney are lizards. <laughs> no, and if you, when you, you ask somebody... If he ate human flesh. You asked if he ate yeah, human flesh. Yeah, and that I is did. not a question for the Secretary <laughs> yeah, of Defense. Well, I just... It, look, if... Again. <laughs> Jesus, if he look, has eaten human flesh, we better find out. Louis, if he, he is asked, a lizard, we better know, because he's him, coming back. If he ate Mexican babies, <laughs> you asked... Donald Rumsfeld, if he ate Mexican if babies, if I was in his position, I would be I'd have I'd be happy for the opportunity to acquit myself on that. <laughs> Come on, on that issue, the guy doesn't have to. What the fuck is it hurt a person to say no? I am not a lizard. No, because I haven't then, eaten a Mexican baby. Because then somebody in the press can write, when asked if he was a lizard, yeah, Donald Rumsfeld replied, told a story about the guy <laughs> buying him dinner. What the fuck kind of a denial is that? It's it's not. It's, what the it's, fuck kind of denial is that? No one would buy dinner for a lizard in a restaurant. I believe he that, was the, saying, that he was the answering lizard, you through a story. I believe that the space lizard baby eaters <laughs> who have he's not who, a space who lizard. He and Dick Cheney are have some weird thing where they can't lie about it. Um, Listen, where if asked directly, they have to say yes. Oh, you think that's a thing? they can either not answer or they can't say or they have to say yes. <laughs> So they, they do anything. Tell a story about someone buying you dinner. <laughs> so you're saying that there's something ingrained yes. where in the lizardness that keeps him from saying, from just saying no, no. Of course not. They can't do that. Can't or... do it. His lizard head comes off and the <laughs> red eyes come out. In, in honor of Louis C.K., I just tweeted, <laughs> oh, answer God. the question, are you a lizard? Hashtag, oh, are you a lizard? No. Louis C.K. wants to know. Pass it along. Oh, I really God. want to know. I can't. I just wait. want an answer, and I'm more. And I really was fascinated that he said, "Can you imagine what would happen if I answered?" Exactly. By the way, <laughs> could you imagine? I asked him if he would, if we could wipe out France to save Arizona and Texas. Would we do it? He's and he said, "He's answer. why wouldn't you answer? He, why would you? Because <laughs> the As answer, Donald you, Rumsfeld. Why would you answer that? Because he may ha if the if, if he can't answer the question, that means he's he's had to weigh that and he may have to do it, <laughs> and he may have to do it. The fact that he can't answer that on the same level plane as can't answer that he's not a lizard yeah. means that they're both viable questions. <laughs> no, they are not. Yeah. Roland, do we survive? I can't wait till Louie gets home, and it's going to be dark, and he'll uh, he'll unlock his door, shut it, and someone will go, leave the light well, off, Louie. Well, his guy asked leave me for the the email address. <laughs> yes, Did he yes. really? No. Uh, <laughs> really? Is that a road spell? Let me, uh, leave say, the light off. Let me say hi to Brian in Pennsylvania. Brian. Fellas, radio, that was, that was radio gold. That was a fantastic interview. And do you realize that you had one of the major chess pieces in world history, I mean, the last 10 years has influenced all of us as Americans. As exactly. No, absolutely. Just interviewed. And you know what was even classic was that you can tell how much Louis C.K. is a fucking comedian. This guy could not <laughs> keep a straight, you couldn't do a straight question. <laughs> no, I, I couldn't stop laughing. You know what? We I was laughing, laughing because well, I, I was a little scared to be saying it. Like, it was, I was laughing a little nervous. nervous. I was cracking up because Travis Teft, by the way, Travis, was popping up pictures of them. Of, of Donald Rumsfeld at the As podium a with a big lizard head, yes. uh, like a suit, a tie, and a lizard yes. head. And I was laughing. Well, I couldn't look at the screen because I was laughing. Look, we all know Danny Ross sits in this. <laughs> it, 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 it was a perfect interview because he, he's not going to answer really, really tough questions. So Louis no. kept it nice with the lizard thing. I, I no. think it was fascinating you, you, to you, talk. You certainly asked the, the, Donald the right Rumsfeld. questions. I wanted to keep. I like that I got a direct answer to have you. How many people have you met that were that died by hanging? <laughs> yeah, there were quite and a few. And he said more than one. More than one. <laughs> Very casual. That was more a, than one. That right. was hey, right, yeah. Right. Uh, well, well, well Saddam is a biggie. Here. Maybe Chemical yeah. Ali. Yeah, you might have met him at you some point. Him. At one point, someone in the background was laughing. One of his people. Oh, one of his people started laughing. You we got, heard, like, we got the, the lizard comment. I got to hear it again. Oh, you no. got that, yeah? Oh, no. Iraq. Oh, no. Here we go. Yeah, play. This is the answer with the dinner thing. All right, play it until he says you mess with the wrong people. I want to hear that context. <laughs> oh, go yeah, ahead. The whole thing is a minute and a half. All right, that's fine. Where are we going? 
Huh? It's interesting, though, because there are people who think, I mean, here's a guy who, were, you know, met Eisenhower as a congressman, right? I was running for Congress, exactly. And, and you know, worked for Ford and Nixon and Reagan and both Bushes. And there's still those people out there that think, you know, Rumsfeld and Dick Cheney are l actually lizards. <laughs> <laughs> who I mean literally there's people that think they're lizards from outer space <laughs> yeah that's true who eat human flesh I don't know if anybody's ever asked you directly sir but are you are you a lizard <laughs> I don't think <laughs> are you actually can you just please give that a straight answer <laughs> are you're, 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 a lizard person Louis a little left answer. leaning no sir. I'm not I'm not I'm deflecting let him answer are you a lizard here's the short answer yeah. I'm in New York City I walk down the street, people walk up, shake hands, stop me, they want an autograph. They wouldn't do this to Lizard. Go to eat last uh -huh. night at dinner, and Joyce and I were sitting there in the little Italian restaurant, <laughs> and, and a man came he up and said he'd like to buy my dinner, and I yeah. and, and it turns out I paid for my dinner. The next thing I know, the waiter comes back and said, the man insisted to pay for your dinner, and uh -huh. here's your canceled receipt for Ooh. me. Oh, wow, that's See, nice. there's plenty of people that... <laughs> but he, you didn't answer the question. He's that not going to... I, I dignify think you're around with the wrong people. He's not going to dignify an answer to. He, are you stop a there? Stop it there. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> he was asked if he was a lizard from space who eats human flesh. <laughs> right. His answer was the short answer is I was walking in New York City last <laughs> night. We went to a little Italian restaurant. Me and Joyce had a nice dinner. A fellow wanted to pay for our dinner. Turns out we'd already paid for our dinner. Next thing I know, the waiter gives us a canceled check. Says. It's on the house. I think you're messing with the wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> that was his answer verbatim. That or was his say answer hanging? verbatim. I did think he, say, he said, you're hanging, hanging around with the wrong, wrong people. No, no. Play just that last quote again. Okay. He, you didn't answer the question. He's that not going to dignify. I think you're hanging around with the wrong people. Well, even what the fuck does that even mean? Uh, he meant that uh, uh, we shouldn't be hanging with you. <laughs> oh, is that it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're so dead, Somebody Louis. bought me so dinner so last bad. night. It's you're hanging bad. around with the wrong people. It's still bad for you because he basically told us you're we dead. shouldn't be hanging with you're you. You're so dead, Louie. <laughs> unless oh you want to be God. collateral damage. You know what? You know what I say? <laughs> Go see Louis C.K. at the Borgata. I don't think he makes it to April 23rd. April 23rd. You know Come watch me be assassinated live like Malcolm X. Come watch a fucking patsy <laughs> whose kid is in a cellar being beaten a patsy. <laughs> shoot me in the fucking head in front of America in front of the Atlantic City fucking half awake gamblers they're gonna walk you through the kitchen mm -hmm. <laughs> like Bobby in front of a bunch of comped, <laughs> comped Chinese guys <laughs> just gonna flew get in on jets your head's gonna oh. vaporize yeah the point is still the lizard See, there is why I asked said him, because yeah, I hang with the wrong people Rumsfeld is that when I saw him do those press conferences, I always thought if somebody asked them something like that, are you a lizard that eats human flesh? He'd go, uh, yes, I am. Next question. And it would be like, now we know, but who cares? They have too much power for anybody to do anything. He's an unelected official. He's a, he's a dangerous man. He never has been. He's He ran for Congress once. Otherwise, he's never been, been fucking dangerous. People that have been elected. He was. Sure. He's a great man. Sure. Yeah. Donald Rumsfeld. Great man. That's what I say. Uh, That's my take I mean, on it. Look him. at his fucking face. It's a, he's a handsome that man. That is an easy mask look to zip back. on and off. <laughs> <laughs> he's not zipping it. <laughs> you think he's zipping it over yeah, his every, lizard yes, head? Every few years, they update it so he ages. <laughs> <laughs> they, got, they got a guy that they fucking took hostage from Lucas, you know, from... The uh, Lucas Ranch. Industrial Lights and Magic? Yeah. <laughs> Does it, when does that he go back to him. being a, a lizard lizard? What's that? When does he just go back to being and a he lizard? He goes lizard? home. He's probably fucking sitting there as a lizard talking with right now. Really? I am not going to answer that question. Do you think he's just he's sitting, sitting there? there as a lizard with his little fucking green legs crossed? Because he didn't have to be in public today. That's right. And his tail. The guy laughing. If you probably play it back, you'll hear a lizard. He left. <laughs> the guy in the background. Yeah, he's playing with his tail. Whatever lizards do when they're <laughs> twirling the his tail on the phone, to not even answering your question. Yeah, I'm not going to answer that. Get his phone. <laughs> He's not a lizard. <laughs> uh, you are so You're hanging dead. around with the wrong people.
hanging well, around please, with the wrong people. What kind of fucking answer was that? I well, don't here's understand the, here's, it. Here's a short It's answer. almost like if you ask a computer a, fuck, a question that gets underneath its program, <laughs> and it comes <laughs> and back it comes gibberish. Out. It doesn't know what like, it is. Like, that's how to find out somebody's a robot. You're talking to them, and all of a sudden you say to them, like, lemonade dog sauce, and they go, <laughs> 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. That's what that was like. That's how Kirk used to get he, the, I'm the Androids you, all the time. He, I'm telling you what happened. I'm going to tell you what happened. <laughs> all right. He is a lizard who presses these buttons to answer questions. Like, he's he's got a body suit that goes on when he does press conferences right. that he runs ergonomically. Okay. But when he's a lizard with his body off, he can't talk, so he just uses this button. Oh, like, it's like a like soundboard. Your, like your fucking like soundboard. Like a sound machine or something. Yeah, well, like... No shit. Yeah, yeah that yeah, kind yeah. of... He's okay. got a Rumsfeld loaded one of those. <laughs> okay. And I said, are you a lizard? And he went, oh, fuck. And he fumbled and he hit the tell the story about dinner button. <laughs> <laughs> he told he tell the story, that nice story button. Like when we hit like the wrong when they ask, sometimes. He has a yeah. button. He had that loaded for, like, have you enjoyed your time in New York? Yeah, yeah. So what have and you been doing in New York? Are you a lizard that well, eats flesh? Oh, fuck. Ah, well, I went to a dinner. Shit. Here's a sto short of it. I was, uh, di and he's like, I can't just stop it now. <laughs> no, he has to I yeah, let, can't stop I it. Let it roll. Yes. So yeah, I let the whole dinner <laughs> That's story. What <laughs> That's what happened. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, Louie. God damn, man. That was that was one for uh, the ages, right there. Uh, he's not a lizard, I don't be think. Careful but of, if he is. Be careful what you eat in the coming days. There, yeah. Oh, you're gonna Be get careful. some fucking yeah. rice and it's stuck in your I'm side. I only eat figs like Caesar Augustus. <laughs> <laughs> fucking lived on figs till his wife painted poison on him. <laughs> uh, we should take a break, I guess. Yeah, what do you want to please. Do? Let's take a break. And and certainly getting props on uh, the interview there. Oh, so. it was a lot yeah, nice of fun job. talking. To, well, actually, I had to be the straight yes. man. Actually uh, someone had to keep him on the that. fucking no, phone. No, it is pretty <laughs> artful how you're able to keep him on the phone after yeah, those questions. Just blurt out another question. And you heard me going like, da, 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 da. Da, 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 All I'm trying to think of is anything I can ask What's him. What's it making nice? Uh, what kind of airplane did you fly? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, Christ, man. All right. Uh, we got Duff McKagan. He's going to check oh, in next. Coming in? Say hi to us. Is it's been a, a while. Good friend of the show. <laughs> He's not a lizard. He can help you with stocks, too, Lo. All right. Good. Yeah, he knows hear, the stock market about, a little bit. Uh, what's going on with Apple? Other things. Uh, all right. Are you a lizard? That's what <laughs> still we're Still unanswered. Asking. That's still, what we're asking on Twitter still right still now. Remains unanswered. Unanswered. Remains unanswered. 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 Enjoy that hashtag. Are you a lizard? One God. word. Opie and Anthony. Yeah, Louis C.K. Borgata, April 23rd, man. God damn. What are you doing? Get your tickets now. Oh, oh, oh. He, you didn't answer the question. <laughs> He's that not going to dignify. around with the wrong people. He's You're not. listening to Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. On the virus. Serious XM. Ah, oh, fuck. What a day. Louis C.K. in studio. Louis C.K. on Twitter. And uh, Louis playing the Borgata, April 23rd. Tickets are going to go fast, man, and he's hoping to add a second show, but that's that, it's not a guarantee yet. So get your tickets for April 23rd, Louis C.K., Borgata Hotel. We got Duff McKagan outside the yeah, studio. Duff. Duff. You bring him in yeah. to join the program. Certainly. Come on in, Duff. What's he been up to? There he is. What's up, Duff? Hello. Duff. It's been a while. We're in the new uh, studio. How you been, man? Good. How are you? Good, good. Doing all right. It's Louis C.K. Hi, how Duff are you? Duff McKagan. Yeah, how are you doing? Nice to meet hey, you. You too. Nice meeting you. Yeah, Louis's a good guy. Good we like Louis. Yeah. He's going to be dead soon, though. No, no, he'll soon. Yeah, that's, cool. that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, Donald Rumsfeld is going to have him killed <laughs> for calling him. Oh. It might not be a good was, day. He's a lizard. <laughs> yeah, you missed it. But, you guys uh, got one of the five interviews or something? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 We did real well, man. I don't know how he got that. Louis, done. Louis, was no, he had no he business. Was a lizard man. <laughs> yeah, he, he had no business calling this radio. Show. No, none. So I really don't know how. I don't he know. Got who, him. I think no. was that Roland that actually bullshit. Yeah. bullshit? Because Imus is mad. Imus does politics. You know, Imus didn't get. Uh, Imus didn't get uh, Rummy. What happened? Uh, Opie and Anthony got him. Yeah, he's pissed Most off that we got him. <laughs> Son of a bitch! I don't <laughs> uninvite him from my party. <laughs> right. So and, who <laughs> else got? Who else got him? This is us and John Stewart. John Stewart. <laughs> I think yeah. that's really it. And then like the. 
top, whatever. Other and then guys, like right? you know the, the news channels, you know, the yeah, view. Yeah. He was on the View, like a View, and That's maybe a Fox thing. type thing. Yeah, he got the ladies on the View. Yeah. We got probably but, two Fox News. But we got to the bottom of it. Louis C.K. almost had him answer the question: Are you a lizard? <laughs> are you a fle- have you eaten human flesh? Are you a lizard? Yeah, That's almost. Asked him, asked him close. repeatedly. Did you? And he refused to answer yes or no. Of course he refused. And refused now we're worried about Louis' uh, safety. Yeah, because he is uh, never answered. Rumsfeld you, insider, one of the inner circle guys. You better yeah. stay up on this floor and not leave. Maybe no, I'm not going to be alone for a while. Oh. Yeah. yeah, you are. Stay I'm not walking with you today. Stay <laughs> up on this floor until he mysteriously flies out a window. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, Louis killed himself, man. Oh, he weird. seemed so happy. I saw, I saw him shot in the gymnasium <laughs> at the Pentagon. <laughs> I saw him alone in a wheelchair. I saw I saw Louie in Times Square and someone poked him with an umbrella. An umbrella. Very, very strange. And months later, it's not even his body was full of salt water. <laughs> right. And he was in the desert. It was weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah very what happened? Weird. Very strange. A tattoo that he didn't used to have. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> and then Whatever. We'll, and then we'll go, oh well, yeah. he'll be missed. His spleen is, is gone. gone. His spleen is gone and there's no sign of surgery. <laughs> no sign of surgery. <laughs> we found a scale next to him. A couple that scales on his couple yeah. of scales and scratches. Is this your guy? way of catching me up on the show. Yeah, oh, sorry, yeah, no, sorry, no, sorry. Yeah, 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 I apologize. Don't worry yeah, about it. Well, yeah. you know. What's going on today? Yeah. What's Qaddafi doing and all that stuff? Uh, you know, he's, just... he's still um, uh, defiant, I guess you'd call oh, it. Oh, he's defiant. Yes, he's defiant. Yeah. I think he's trying to kill as many of his people as he can before he gets killed. Uh, before, before, yeah, he gets out. Well, it's like a stratego or something. Yeah, what do you think about that whole thing? The Middle East uh, revolting in general, and you know, I, I guess my my only comment uh i i you know i have that column for the seattle weekly mm-hmm. and this i got a an a email from a girl an american girl who's married to an egyptian guy so this was a couple weeks ago and she they were in the square and uh, uh the the girl's from seattle uh but she she lives there and she she her letter highlighted what a day-to-day life is like there and how much people make a day and how much like bread and gasoline is uh and she do- she wasn't really commenting either way she was just this is our reality we need change mm-hmm. um and um it's kind of, you know i played uh my only experience really I, I played in israel and i played in dubai and i played in dubai about three years ago at the desert rock festival they're, they're really trying to do like a rock festival and the kids they come from Iraq, Iran, Egypt, India, and they're starved for rock and roll. And kids, rock, uh, uh, kids are just kids, and they, you know these are twenty-something-year-olds, and they they want they want rock, and mm-hmm. they want to talk, and they want to exchange ideas, and uh, very very uh, um, eye-opening um, th- th- to see. You know, I mean, traveling in a rock band, you see that. People are just people wherever you go, mm-hmm. and the people don't, aren't necessarily their government. Mm-hmm. You know, just like you know, mm. me touring. I wasn't one of Bush's cronies. You know, when I, I was. I'm a, I'm yeah, a free thi- <laughs> I'm a free thinker, and there's a lot of free thinkers around the world. So, so I guess uh, these. I don't know. You know, my take is on the, 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 the young youth of those. Areas are just a little sick and tired of it. Yeah, sure. but you know what? They, they, you throw the leaders out, and then the youth isn't in charge of who gets put in next. Well, no, that's, some the, other, that's the problem. It's, it's Donald Rumsfeld. Right. He's, he's, Rumsfeld will decide. He's yeah. deciding right now. <laughs> no, he's cloning a pot of himself oh, yeah. to go there now. <laughs> he's brewing the up Egyptian some sort leader. of uh, yeah, dictator stew. Yeah. Over there. Yeah, yeah, his lizard there. friends will yeah. be in the office over there. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's a good no, point. The, way the, the youth can't. Sorry to keep digressing, but when you asked him about the primaries and stuff he said you can see how their brains work and you can study them <laughs> he said that he about say. learning about the candidates you can see how their brains work he probably literally has yeah. like seen their brains <laughs> yeah, working yeah, and dissect them open them up <laughs> yeah sorry uh, it, was, We're uh, very... it was just really fucked up to have uh, that powerful a guy we've like, never had know. a guy like that on our show it's no offense to crazy. you and louis and everybody else but that's that's yeah. a that's a powerful guy yeah he's had people killed well how, have how... you ever had people killed duff Naturally. <laughs> yeah, Naturally, of course. Come on. Um, so, how do I follow up Donald Rumsfeld? I, yeah, it's not the best spot for you. How about, I'll be uh, honest with you. How about uh, throw a curveball in there and uh, ask you about a couple of things about the stock market? Stock market. Yeah. yeah. You what, invest. What, you invest a lot. Are you bullish or bearish right about now? Um, I'm I'm kind of neither right now. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I I'm a I 
take positions and I hold them. Oh, you're a hold guy? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think okay. we talked about this. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah. You're, yeah, and you're, you're much more of a, you're an active guy. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not an hour by hour buying ticks kind of guy, but I'll, I'll hold for well, anywhere made, from a few days to a month. You made a oh, move wow. yesterday, yeah, though. So, yeah, yeah, I made I made a great move yesterday. Why don't yesterday. you tell Duff your move? Well, what's your move? I, bu I bought some uh, some uh, <laughs> I bought some Listen Apple move. some Apple call options right before it tanked. <laughs> oh, well, oops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oops. I, I see it coming back, but you know, you know, the market's been down a couple of days in a row here. I buy so. gold gold coins. That's oh, right. you're a gold so, guy. Gold yeah. coins. Yeah, I've gold seen coins. Louis do this. It's very fascinating. Ones on TV. You got some on. Ones on TV. Do you <laughs> carry Krugerrands I with you? I carry one gold <laughs> coin. Oh, for Just when the, the when shit you get hits mugged. The fan. At least you. Oh, for when the shit hits <laughs> yeah. the fan. So, yeah, so you can get a taxi one, or something. I've got one gold coin. That right. is great. I got one ounce of gold on me at all times. I shouldn't be telling this to people. <laughs> right? Why am I saying this? I, I am yeah. always <laughs> carrying an ounce of gold. You really don't like your life. If you hit me on the head, it's worth it. Guaranteed at least fourteen hundred dollars. I'm getting the impression, yeah, and I'm Canadian. getting the impression Louis doesn't like his life. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's a Canadian. Asking, Canadian gold, asking Rumsfeld if different. he's a lizard uh, and carrying around gold coins. That means yeah. about you heavy really gold. I know some gold. heavy, right? No, gold coins are gold nice. You nice get to heavy. You slam yeah. it down. You yeah. Hey man, give me a good farthing of whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's for real. <laughs> give me a satchel of that bit is great. By the yeah, way, the yeah, whole yeah. payment vague oh, payment. That's what made payments. me start liking gold coins. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing to have, yeah. especially in this day and age. Right. The world I come from, you know, it, like was so, especially in my twenties, was so sort of insane. Mm -hmm. and, and rock and roll is so up and down, and there's enough chaos and roller coasterness in rock and roll. Yeah. That uh, and you know, my I'm the last of eight kids. My my parents grew up in the depression, and uh, uh, so I learned a lot. I heard the stories, heard the you know, just kind of learned the lessons. And there's enough chaos in my life that I really found when I went back to school in my 30s at business school that uh, I was really like uh, that rule of sevens for me um, seven percent every seven years you double your money that really stuck for huh. me so I don't I, I really non-aggressive yeah portfolio yeah mm -hmm. and uh, and I don't lose any sleep and uh, I, I hold positions I held through the whole 2008 yeah, all that. Uh, you know, when when, I, when that like, tanked, yeah, and everybody. Put it all in, you know, take it all out and put it. You know, just I, leave I didn't it. Do it. Don't yeah. look at every now, statement. Your problem, like it's, Anthony, is that you're a blackjack player. Yes. And the problem yeah. with blackjack players, if you just sit there and win twenty five dollars every hand, then you're going to be a millionaire if you're just patient. <laughs> That's great. And when you lose, you're only going to lose twenty five dollars. But which you you start like thinking casino. that you're good at blackjack. It's like a casino. If you win the, three hands, quote. you think it's due to yeah. your eminence on right. earth. Right. So you go fuck it. Ten thousand dollar <laughs> hand. I'm like, I don't consider it winning twenty five bucks. I consider no. it losing nine thousand yes. nine hundred and seventy five dollars. <laughs> right. He's been known to do that stuff <laughs> because he didn't beat bet that. He's done some uh, pretty crazy hands. I've done crazy hands. But you've yeah. done you've done okay. You're pretty yeah. smart about that. Uh, answer. I I'm not. I, you know what? Here's here's what Are you people up? don't understand. I think I was until last uh, time out. Wow. <laughs> By the way, go to the, go to the Borgata. Enjoy the Anthony Cumia wing <laughs> that they've, uh, they've installed there when you go see Louis C.K. at the Borgata. Wow. Uh, no, it was a biggie. But, uh, but I, How much did you lose, will you tell me? I don't talk. I'll tell no. you off the air. Okay. But I don't like talking figures on I the understand. air. I understand. Because, you know. I understand. Right there. Because <laughs> yeah. the guy's oh, like that. Guys. Yeah. Imagine if I answered that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that to me, to me, answering that is like him answering the lizard question. Yes, I just won't do it. But uh, see, did, I don't did think Ron a lot of people understand. Anything like uh, I'm, I'm, what are you doing, Don, Donald? What do you call him, uh, Mister Rumsfeld? Oh, I was okay. calling him. Uh, Could should have called Mister Secretary. Do, are you? Did you say anything like are, are you pimping your book? Is that where? Is that uh, what are you pimping his book? Is no, that what's going on? I, I was trying like, to sell books. I yeah. was saying uh, that his book is fantastic, even though I have not read it yet. Oh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I looked at the pictures. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, and I even read some of the words under the pictures. Is there any like childhood <laughs> pictures? <laughs> Me, oh yeah, yeah. Like, um, this, uh, his little egg. <laughs> they have a picture of him when he was just in his egg. <laughs> yeah, when he was just an egg in the in the sand. Oh, yeah, in the <laughs> sand. Buried in the sand. <laughs> in the sands of Mars. In the red sand of Mars when he was an egg. No, they, there really is no childhood pictures. When he there. was no, an egg in the sands of Mars six thousand years ago. <laughs> 
He should have put some pictures. Martian like, uh, He's got so, pictures. It well, know, oh, like, as a child. Right? You know, Childhood like pictures would have made it more endearing, right? Yeah, when he was a teenager yeah. in Mesopotamia. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is my uh, yeah fashion faux pas when I was 16. You know, yeah, something, something like that. Like that. Yeah. You know, way in back. College. When the hell was he born? How old is he? Uh, yeah, he says seventy-eight, I think. So. Yeah. Oh, Duff, what yeah. are we promoting today? What, yeah. what do you? What brings you to New York? <laughs> well, I got uh, the Loaded has a record coming out. Oh, right on. Um, uh, April nineteenth. It's called The Taking. We're making a movie. Really? For it. It's pretty damn hilarious. Right. Yeah. Uh, our it. our drummer gets kidnapped. Give me a figure too. And it all happens in one day, and and uh, uh, it's a madcap uh, comedy. Well, of course. of course, but it's it's really oh thank you coffee delivered yeah Starbucks you guys do it all we're not right happy here. with Starbucks this is real good he no, he remembers when Starbucks literally was a local fucking right when it was a Pike coffee. Street when it was a cool There's thing one. for a minute there was right? you remember when there was one there was, at the market yeah Pike yeah. Place Market uh, so. and at the time they had to compete with all a bunch of other kids with their own like little coffee There's kiosks coffee there was more those kiosks on the streets that used to have there was one there was the the one under the the monorail that's right. the original that yeah, was the first sort of starbucks walk up um no that wasn't before starbucks but uh, there was just like a lot of little coffee but Louis, i remember that. we should ask him because are we, you from seattle no, no i used but, to play I do stand up so i yeah. played there a lot in my youth but in we should youth. there's a couple yeah. of shitty comedy clubs there <laughs> we should they ask were him shitty you know giggles i don't know if you ever i yeah, played giggles. giggles yeah now you know it just turned into what Jiggles, it's a, it's a uh, strip club. <laughs> really? Just jiggles to God. Jiggles? They yeah. just had to change a letter. It was you know very what? inexpensive. It's really yeah. sad about comedy. <laughs> I don't know why. Because One I think, letter away from the fucking strip club. <laughs> I think that place did pretty well with comedy. Giggles was there for years, and I worked for one guy who owned it, and uh, I came, I was a young comic then, and I was headlining, <laughs> and I did the first show. Was you had to work like Tuesday through Sunday then. And so I did the Tuesday night show, and then Wednesday morning he woke me up in my hotel like at 6 a.m. And he says, uh, how do you feel it went last night? Wow. And I said, I thought I did pretty good. He okay. goes, I didn't feel that the audience respected you at all. Wow. At he 6 a.m. he did yeah. this. Yeah. And I said, what are you talking about? And he goes, you don't wear a jacket. You're on stage in a t-shirt. <laughs> the fuck? I want you to wear a jacket the rest of the week. Wow. And I said, I don't Ugh, what an wear asshole. a jacket. I don't own one. I'm certainly not <laughs> traveling with one. Yeah. So why don't I take you to the store today and buy and you, you buy a jacket and I'll take it out of your check and then your shows will go better. And I said, a listen, jacket is. He gonna... said that. And <laughs> I said, listen, all... I'm not going to go to the show with, to the store with you. I'm not going to buy a jacket. So just tell me now if I got to get on the plane and go home because this I'm not this whole line of question. I'm yeah, not doing this. It's just awful. Either put up with me or send me home. Yeah. And he was all right. So, I, you should have worn a jacket, but fine. What was the 6 a.m. thing about? He called me at 6 a.m. That's when he guys. He that's was, when he wakes up. He was obsessed with yeah. the fact that you he was did, up all night. Look good. Fucking but comic wasn't let's, wearing let's a jacket. Let's fast forward for Duff. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Louis played uh, Carnegie Hall recently Very in a nice. black shitty T-shirt. Yeah. yeah. So what did that guy? That's know? right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry to say black shitty. Black T-shirt and jeans. No, it was, it was just a black T-shirt and jeans. No one gave a shit because the guy was hilarious and got a standing ovation at the yeah, end. Yeah, and that guy. Has, so what did that guy know with his stupid jacket? His club's now Jiggles. It's That's jiggles. right. So look where he's at. That's right. <laughs> right. Well, he's probably looking at. Duff, can we ask yeah. you something? Because we were talking about this earlier. Now you remember when Starbucks was one store. We were talking about corporate America squeezing everyone out, especially like a Starbucks is squeezing out all the local coffee guys. Are you seeing that even in Seattle? Is no, the, the Northwest uh, in general, like Seattle and Portland. Have, have you seen Portlandia yet? Have you no, seen I haven't it? seen it. What's, you no. know, you've heard about it. Yeah, no. what? kind no. of genius. That's what yeah, I heard. It's a funny. show on like IFC, and it's a, uh, it's a, you have to see it. It's a, it's a it kind of takes the piss out of um, uh, the preciousness of like Portland and Seattle, but more Portland. Um, mm -hmm. But no, there's still like little independent They're coffee in roasters there. all over the place in. In Seattle, in Seattle, Starbucks is looked at as sort of like, oh, really? You went to Starbucks when you could have went to right. Stumptown or right, right. Zoka Coffee Roaster, you know? So you guys are hanging in there because the rest of America is being taken over by Starbucks. That's the but it's convenient. Point. I mean, I, I, I don't really. It's Starbucks is fine. Mm -hmm. um, it is huge in corporate, yes, but uh, you can get it anywhere. Mm -hmm. In the world, and that's the problem, man. man. Oh, that's it. Yeah, man. Well, uh, right. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of losing that edge, you know. Oh yeah. I, I kinda you? Get, 
But uh, you know, I mean, I, I, yeah. But do you only want to go to Starbucks? I mean, wouldn't no, you like to? No, no, wouldn't no. you like to think, man? When I used to go to Chicago, there's this one coffee place, you know, McGee's, and they always had Ethiopian something or other. But now it's just a Starbucks. No, no, I will seek out. The, there's a there's a great little coffee place uh, on Sixth uh, and Fifty Fourth or Fifty Fifth or something here in town I'm that okay. I like. And there's a lot of good little coffee places. I'll, and I will seek it out. But yeah, if, I seek it out too. If I'm up here, but a lot of places more. Starbucks kills those. They kill them. They're, they they predatorily kill them. <laughs> no, no, there is that. They they will. Uh, str- strategically put their stores in yeah. places of course um yeah uh but i don't know where we're going with this <laughs> starbucks is taking i get you know when bp uh, we got the whole corporate thing that's yeah. BP, where we're uh, i mean that kind of the, the bp and the, and they sort of uh uh, uh passing the buck thing happened in, in the you know, now in, that i made some goal. money on BP. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> BP, BP went went down because you know Who little ducks fuck were what fucking it did to the environment. ducks were being all coated in oil. <laughs> Buy opportunity. Well, by the way, I have the envi- like I a have a different view about that because yeah. a lot of people called it an oil spill. That's what they're calling it. Mm-hmm. Like it's an oil spill. They like to think that a corporation created toxic oil and poured it into the Gulf. <laughs> yes. That's what people like to tell themselves. That a Texas American corporation. <laughs> but oil is fucking dead pine trees and all kinds of it's just it's a yes. natural mineral that's beneath the earth that leaked out right by a British corporation that was trying to get it. <laughs> yes. But it's it's the earth shitting in its own mouth. It's not it's all natural. <laughs> and animals died and greed was the cause of it. But it wasn't. It's it's natural. Yeah, it is a natural. It's a thing. bubbling. It's, it's like getting mad at a volcano in a way. <laughs> uh, uh, lava. Yeah. Yeah. Volcano. It's like getting mad at a volcano, and you go, "Well, human beings prop made the volcano erupt." Well, human beings are just like animals. We're just like we're just here fucking around. No, we're like yeast that eats sugar and shits alcohol. <laughs> we eat oil and shit smoke. I mean, it's just something that we do. If you pulled back, like a anthropologist or even just biologist, you'd say these bugs burrow into the ground and 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 sop up the oil yeah it's like if beavers move into your area the water no, goes they, up they, they the didn't... water goes up nobody gets mad the, nobody calls the beavers fucking republicans but here's the deal here's the deal bp bp didn't shit in their own mouth they yeah. shit in the gulf of Mexico's. Mouth. Yeah, and by the way, it's the Gulf of Mexico. Like nobody even gives a shit how the Mexicans feel about it. Like it's a thing that America <laughs> suffered for, and Mexico's like, yeah, you know, we're not nuts about it either. They're busy in a drug war right now. Yeah, they're having you know? a big drug war yeah. down there, and mm. I don't but know. But it's all, you know. I, I I just decided it was a great time to buy British petroleum stock, and it went up. It started going back sure. up after after they realized I bought it when it was still leaking, and the second they capped that thing and was and did the test, and it's like, well, it's capped. Dink, 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 it ticked up. I sold of out. Of course. And I'm like, I'm people counting don't... my oily fucking pelican right. money. My <laughs> oily, dead, pelican, dead money. pelican money. It was fantastic. No, and by the way, that's what people like to think, that it's all cleaned and mm. it's been capped. Go buy BP again. <laughs> Man, my of course, God. it's just as bad. There's like wafting weird gel- black jellyfish of oil now yeah. roaming the Gulf. Yeah. Yeah, just kind of killing creatures. Around, like killing things. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I know uh, yeah. a couple of my buddies are two of the uh, guys on the, on the Northwestern, that deadliest catch oh, yeah. crab boat. And uh, they say even now, crabbing up in the Bering Sea. They get Valdez oil that they run into. Still. Still. Yeah, yeah like a, a, a foot thick. They'll wow. pull up some pots and it's, they're just coated. Wow. Yeah, uh, it's still in there. Makes them real tasty, though. The, the, the crab? Legs. Oh, yeah. yeah. That oil really? seeps in the crab legs. Nice and moist. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, Nothing yep. better. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> Duff's like, what God the bless fuck? those guys because uh, those king crab legs are great. They are tasty. They are. Tasty. They are fantastic. Yeah. And then you watch the show and you're like, God, I really got to appreciate when I eat these because people a little are more. literally dying. Mm-hmm. Uh, from uh, Actually, uh, what's his name? One Justin, of the guys Justin died. Justin Tennyson. They found him in a hotel. They found him in a hotel. Hope that's uh, not the guy you knew, Duff. D- no. D- oh. Yeah, he was... Um, one of the guys, they found him in a hotel room. Kid, they, yeah. Which ship was it? Which one of the boats He was, was on the, sure the uh, Captain Phil's boat. Yeah. Was uh, it Captain Phil's the, boat? Uh, I yeah. I don't even remember. 
Shit. I had to you know, a that's, ago. that's all uh, sort of close to home, all that stuff. That's great. Yeah. Oh, I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. Like so uh, so Loaded has a record coming out in April. We're, we're going to uh, play South by Southwest in a couple of weeks down in Austin, which nice. is a really killer, great event. And uh, we, have a, we have a new record company that's just completely <laughs> excited about this. No, I'm sorry. I was just laughing. That Lu Listen. Louis found out how much I lost and said I could have set up a scholarship fund that would have lasted generations. <laughs> he could have done that with the money he lost in Atlantic City. <laughs> Wait, are you Generation. What's that? No, I wrote no, that. He wrote it down. I asked him to tell me how much he lost, and he, so he wrote oh, it down yeah, for yeah. me. Oh, he yeah, wrote I wrote it down. It down. And, and yeah. I could have affected an entire generation. No, he would have had people like getting choked up when they said your name. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> of what Inst opportunities you created for Instead them. Instead of me and this, spitting on the, the way, floor, walking away from the table. Where the, to me, is the big hole in all of your your conservative politics right because i've heard you say i listen to the show all the time you know when i'm not i i go when i'm shooting my show we start working at so seven you're up in the early, morning so i'm always listening turn on the show yeah and i always hear you saying stuff about like if i if i have to pay more taxes then i won't pay a worker to fix my house right like i if you don't let me have all my money <laughs> i won't, I be won't able to help afford. other americans exactly. and hire people but it's such bullshit because if your taxes go up that's not what curtails your spending what curtails your spending is losing a shocking amount of money <laughs> playing blackjack <laughs> but that's, and that's what most americans enjoyment. their taxes aren't their real burden it's their fucking own stupid retarded spending right and they really their wife is like where's the heating what you know should we pay the gardener now and they I get a cold sweat. Oh fuck! I bought, <laughs> I bought, a, I bought a fucking Stretch Armstrong for, for six thousand dollars on that's, eBay. But that's my decision with my money, not yes. some, not the, gov <laughs> not the government's decision with no, my money. Yes, but you don't get to say that the government made you not pay. The contractor by raising your taxes. They you, make me you pay money. Throw your money actually, away. Actually, actually, me and Opie had to talk about this, and I want to set the record straight as far as this whole tax thing goes with me. It's not even so much paying the taxes. I understand it. We eat it. We all have to fucking do it. Yeah. And I'm not going to be like, oh my god, I, I I can't do something because I'm I'm overtaxed. I despise watching anyone on the news and whatever saying that the rich, the wealthy, which I fall into that category, yeah. uh, aren't doing their part. Well, who says that? Every fucking Democrat and liberal is saying, well, the rich have to do their part. I've been doing my fucking part really for years. I've never so heard that. Oh, <laughs> please. That. Let me that's what you can. hear. Hey, that's, what, that's what you hear. You're it's like, constant. you know what you're like? And this is what the what no. conservatives are like. They're like uh, paranoid girlfriends. <laughs> Yeah. Where if you say, I'm not crazy about how you said that. Why did you just call me a cunt? What? I didn't call no, you a cunt. No, that is a direct... <laughs> I just asked you to treat me a little bit. There are direct quotes from yeah. people saying from that people. the rich, the wealthy have to do their part. They're not doing their part. Yeah. They need to do more. Uh, yeah. They're getting too many breaks, whatever. Mm -hmm. And when I write a check... To pay my taxes, mm -hmm. I'm thinking. Do you really sign the checks? I'm thinking. Yeah, I actually do. Do you write them out and sign them, or are they pre-written? I write. Or... I write them out. Really? It sucks. Yes, I write them out. You don't have an accountant? Yeah, but he doesn't write them out. I just sign. He just you tells me get, how much. I don't. I don't, I don't even sign them. He tells me how I don't even sign them. Really? That's, that's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Until they that's rip why, you that's off. That's why I'm a liberal. It's, you're gonna be so fucked They're gonna rip one you day. off one day, though. You're yeah, gonna sign your own checks. I know it's worth it. It's been I've I've, I've <laughs> stored Billy away Joel, enough years where he hasn't fucked me. <laughs> if Billy Joel could get fucked, Louis C.K. can. Dane. Dane's old own brother True. Yeah. fucked him over. Or Billy Joel's what? Uh, brother no, my, was I, it? Yeah. I've been with my guy for since ninety something. And and one day he's going to realize oh, that he, he's not at, he's doing At this well point, he kind of deserves it. <laughs> you know, okay. there was a guy... There, if he takes my money, he kind of deserves it. He okay. floated me for many years. There was like... I remember one year where I was like, can I... Like, I got... I can't, come on, I want to buy one of those. And he was fighting me over something I wanted to buy. And oh, he wow. Kinda, he politely blurted out, you know, I, you haven't paid me in a year. Oh, <laughs> like, shit. I, I don't take money anymore. Because you're barely alive. <laughs> my, the partners of the something. firm have had told me to dump you right. several times. Wow. Good point. Stop telling me you want to buy a fucking, you know, Rolex. <laughs> when when we haven't been... We haven't me. taken our 2% in a year, <laughs> a year. you asshole. <laughs> So at this point, if he rips me off, he's got to come. Sure. There are people that were with Bernie Madoff for like 17 years. Sure, 17 longer, good years. And, and 17 great years. Yeah. And then just got fucked. That's right. So, you know, 
I, I guess anybody is Would you take that capable. deal? 17 amazing. 17 good years amazing, and then fuck. Amazing It years. all depends on how old you are when that ends. That's true. When it starts. If you're fucking 75, You know what? It's a pretty 80, good deal it. for the victims because they're not much better off than he is in terms of... They, they fucking did the same dumb, corrupt thing. They just Their yeah. crime is they didn't care or want to ask. Right. Mm -hmm. But he gets to be the lightning rod. He goes to jail and they get to go, oh, and start again. At least they get to start again and they're start free. Start over again, they're free, yeah. But he goes to jail. You gotta think yeah. a lot of those guys kind of knew something wasn't right. Something right? was up. You gotta think that. Definitely. Hey, I got one question for Duff. One GNR question. And I apologize ahead of time because I try not to ask you guys the GNR questions anymore. Because Slash goes, "Oh man, come on." But there is like a weird. Rumor well, as long out. as you're still doing the Super Bowl and playing, you well, know, playing a... the one riff and then going back down on the <laughs> right. <riser. laughs> <laughs> Slash had a good then he, gig. Then he needs to answer he, the question. He did have a good gig at the Super Bowl, and, and that's, came up, played uh, that one riff, that's... and then back down yeah. to some <laughs> quiet room. With right. an intern, <laughs> am I done? <laughs> you know, goes back under the field, and there's some bored-looking Texan kid there. Can you imagine? I think that's it on his headset. Yeah, I think that's it. You can go yeah, home. You're can done. You <laughs> that's that's it. His accent. What's that? I don't know. Yeah, that's it. Imagine I think you're done. You imagine, can go ahead and get back on the go. chopper. Imagine slash. the check he got for that. Though. Oh yeah, that's Holy what I was. Crap. That was the but easiest money anybody there, ever earned. There is a rumor of a. Uh, uh, and also, by the way, he might not have been Slash. I mean, he's got that hat. <laughs> <on>. <laughs> And I'm not even Aaron. saying that they fake Slash. Up, I mean, the down. Slash could have sent, a fr like, you want to do that for me? Yeah, I'll yeah. give you 12000 yeah. bucks. Yeah. You know, Go no, do it for there's me. There's no money in the playing Super, Super Bowl half. Oh, really? No, no. It's, a, it's a, uh, just a... Uh, just an honor? The, yeah, well, they the pay the expenses and whatnot. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and, and it's sort of just like... I didn't know promote that. Your, thing. your yeah. project. Yeah. Well, there is a rumor the NFL trying to get you guys together, the, the, the actual... Guns and Roses together. To play the halftime yeah. next Funniest year. Thing was my is that a real? I mean, you've heard that rumor by now, right? Y yeah, I heard it in my own and house. My my wife comes to me. She goes, "Honey, uh, the NFL's trying to get you guys. You know that you're they're getting you guys back together for next year." Sue, I said Sue, is a baby. Really? She goes, "Yeah, it's on the internet." I'm like, Honey, it's, you're talking to me. <laughs> they had to break away from the internet and get back to reality. No, but it's right here on TMZ. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, you don't know yet because it's on. You don't want look at TMZ. That's uh, our culture, though. It's yeah. hilarious. She's yes. living with the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to break the cut the thing. Actually, and turn your head away from yeah. the machine. <laughs> it's me. Look you're, at the person yeah. that you're talking about. You could about. trust me, and you could trust me what I have to say about 14 this. Fourteen years together. <laughs> you know, we're, we're good. Like, wow. um, so. Uh, yeah, no, I just it's just rumor and, and uh, wild rumor. I remember when Guns N' Roses broke, and I, I was in high school, and I was a senior, and the kids, freshmen and sophomores, started listening to Guns N' Roses. Guns N' Roses is the first band that I had the experience of saying, "Young, what are the young kids listening to?" Like I was, oh really, uh, a senior, but I was like, "What is that?" Because I didn't know any, but me and my friends were listening to Led Zeppelin, and Van Halen was like where we were at, and then freshmen and sophomores that had weird haircuts and were kind of fucked up and they were listening to this Guns N' Roses and I was like what the fuck is that? Like it was so different to <laughs> yeah, me. It was yeah. way above it was everything so else from the gut. Oh, so from the gut. Like you oh, could yeah. hear every string of the fucking guitars. Like they just, it was such tightly wound. But I went nuts for it. I, I, I loved it. I, I still, I still, everybody every time I hear it, I still freaked go out. Crazy. I remember that. Yeah. It really it is rare when, because rock and roll, especially by the 80s already was such a fucking oversaturated every every color of the spectrums out there to have a sound that people go that shakes everybody yeah. you know yeah, it's was rarely great. happens and it's weird to be i mean for me you know to be sort of you know to be inside of the thing and not being able to experience it from anywhere you're not getting else, to be a guns and roses fan you didn't get to be a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you didn't you know, to be a fan, fan. <laughs> like you, slash you know at this you know it's so sort of iconic in some circles like slash is ha Top hat could have come up on that pedestal, and people yes. would have went crazy. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. without even him That's in it. That's how big yeah. the deal is. <laughs> so, yeah. that. so it went from us being like, you know, kind of street urchins. Really, right. it just a, it was a band from the from the gut, from the gutter, and. and uh, five guys that that's all we had was mm -hmm. music nothing else and and it was that or or kill somebody really and, <laughs> yeah uh, um it, well it's like the beatles coming out of hamburg like that's what made them great was yeah. playing the rough rooms we have beer thrown at you yeah yeah you're wearing leather because it's actually protecting you <laughs> yeah right <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, the the thought that they were tough guys uh, yeah. back when they no, were actually the in the L.A. Liverpool. scene was such a. I mean, it was dangerous just because how strung out everybody was. Yeah. It was like it was hard to just survive. Yeah. <laughs> and these guys found this. I don't know. You just tuned into this frequency. Yeah. I moved to this Hollywood. One note. Yeah. I moved to Hollywood in September of '84, and um, there they, there was the Summer Olympic uh, Summer Olympics in, in Los Angeles in '84. September the Olymp Olympics were over. So I guess what happened was the cops had cleaned up Hollywood, pushed everybody out, the, the, the hookers mm. and, and the drugs and all that stuff. And they, there must have been some events in Hollywood. And, but I came right as the cops let down all the, the barriers. Oh, and, let everybody come to And the floodgates flood yeah. were open. I, I had no idea. I was 19 years old. And it was just, it was just dangerous. I, I didn't <laughs> live in a high-risk neighborhood. Yeah. I lived in like the, yeah, the kind of the drags of Hollywood. And it was it was for real. I mean, it was it was on. It was it was dangerous. There was ghetto birds over my apartment every night. Helicopters. Okay, uh, ghetto and, you birds. Know, no, there was a time where you you drove down Sunset and you had this feeling like if I got out of my car, I could get killed and nobody will find me for a while. <laughs> really, wow. that bad? Yeah, it was just seemed shitty and yeah, was, yeah. CD. Uh, really, but you know. Yeah. And by the way, they came out of there and they became one of them playing the Super Bowl for five seconds. That only happened, again, going back to our fucking earlier conversation, because of record stores in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. Because some record store owner in Indianapolis said, this sounds fucking hot. I think this will move if I put it out there. And it yeah. grew, that's why he was able to come from the, the gutter up to mainstream was through that system. It's like, you're, it's, it's like, a, it's like a septic system or something. Yeah, like yeah. 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 Actually, and now if you've got to go directly right. from your playing it to iTunes, you, yeah. like, you have to go right to mainstream. There's no I, coming up as much yep. anymore. I was living in Rochester, and we got Appetite from some guy in Arizona. It wasn't available yet. People were just kind of yeah, trading it around. To find that I don't shit. even know if it was a bootleg. I'm not even sure. Uh, That's why the so reason it excited now. me was because right. I haven't heard this, and I it don't was, know where these fucking kids it got it. It absolutely yeah. wasn't in my local record store. Or something that the kids at the time were just yeah the passing freshmen around. and sophomores and then in if, my school got it at the record store then, in Harvard Square and then they obviously changed the cover because you had controversy about the cover right if yeah, I remember so, and then yeah. it and then it was mass it was in every record store in America yeah. but at first when I discovered you guys it was because some dude fucking mailed it to us from yeah. Arizona yeah that record was uh, out for a good year before it hit toured. yeah yeah and they were about to pull us off. See, and that's because the record stores like Louis. Yeah, because the record had legs because it was given some time to seep out right. through the system. And people went, what are those fucking kids that I'm a little afraid of listening to? <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm too, I, I think I'm too old now, but Guns N' Roses and Nirvana. When I heard yeah. those two fucking bands for the first time, I was like, "Holy what shit! Is that? What is going on?" And I haven't had that feeling since. But then again, I'm getting older, so maybe it's, it's passed me by. But yeah, there, well, there is. I mean, I think the there, there's sort sort of a disconnect now with with um, you know younger bands coming up, and I, I have a feeling something's going to happen. But there, you're right. There hasn't been that that one band. That wow moment. Maybe there has been, but it just I just. You know, I'm in another world now. Yeah, I haven't heard it. But I can't really think of one off the top of my head that could have been, you know, Guns N' Roses, Nirvana, and then who was who was next after that? Yeah, well, everyone's still waiting. just still waiting for whatever Black Eyed Peas wants to do. Yeah. <laughs> like there isn't a there isn't that kind of like Something Darwinist just, thing in the music right, right now. Where somebody else comes around and goes, Lady Gaga. forget everything you've ever heard. This is now, <laughs> right? Yeah. Forget maybe everything you've ever like... heard except Madonna. Right. Yeah. Oh, did you guys hear that thing? You probably did. Um, the um, what is it? Uh, Lady Antebellum, the, the song that they won the Grammy for. Oh yeah. Right. yeah I don't yeah, even yeah. know who that is. Yeah. I don't even know what that sounds like. Do you know the song I'm talking about? I heard the song uh, on the Grammy. Yeah. Did you? Okay. So Bob Rivers, he's a DJ. Yeah, it's the album uh, guy. Right. He he's the next day after the Grammys, he was driving to work to to. His, DJ job. Uh, he's a Seattle DJ mm -hmm. now. Um, and he, he goes, I know this song. I know this song is something else. And it's a um, uh, 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 Alan Parsons. <laughs> Alan Parsons project? <laughs> It's and it, and he so he got to work and he put the two songs together. It's it's on the, the on that internet. Holy shit. Um, and it's exactly the melody. What Alan the, Parsons saw? I don't know. You got it. Many songs it by Alan He's Parsons. We got it. We got Daniel it. Has this come out as a big deal? And it won a Grammy. It won a Grammy. I think. Um, uh, that's the lady antebellum. Oh. Hello. 
I certainly Damn. know that Alan Parsons song. Wow, what a That's amazing! Fine. Didn't even notice, but the second that kicked in, it was so exact. That's great. And as I mean, that's like so much even better than George, Her uh, my sweet love, and uh, yeah, yeah, right. That's so, even more exact. Well, the uh, the uh, we were also it's talking even the about same fucking arrangement. Yeah. Right. Lady Gaga doing that, Express I Yourself. Your, it's yeah, that what, little... Lady Gaga does Express Yourself. Well, that's it's fucking where you, Madonna's song. So what ha what's going on there? I, mean, I don't know. She, uh, do, you, do, you find, do we have one of those? Is Alan Parsons Project person going to get some cash for I, that? I, I, you I would assume so. that I they're looking so. into you it. Want, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want that going in front of a jury. No. 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 Wow. No. Uh, let's look. My mama told me when I was young. Now, which one is this and who gives a shit? Gaga. No, check it out. Gaga Madonna. See, at least this is twisted a little bit. Yeah, yeah but they're 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 hear it? there's a part of it that's exact. Yeah. This is Gaga. Nah, it's fuck that. The other one, but it, it's it's a it's yeah, yeah it's a twist. This, this guy didn't fucking do no, it. Right. That that other one's ridiculous. That sucks. That's amazing. It's the exact that other same one, arrangement. You heard the George Harrison one though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You would think you could rip off Alan Parsons because yeah. who cares? <laughs> you know, <laughs> but that's one. You know, that's a popular Some guy, one. Yeah, he's somewhere in Colorado. Like what? I heard. Oh, that's a drag, man. <laughs> Can we get some cash for that? That's a drag, man. Okay, let's yeah. let's hear this one. Who are these people? This is Lady Gaga Someone and Someone might have just put it together wrong. Yeah, but you know who they're both ripping off? Yeah. It's Annie Lennox. Would I lie to you, honey? <laughs> Play that. That does sound a little like that. Would I lie to you? <laughs> that sounds a Would like I that. say something that... Just play that quickly while it's still in our ears. Why? Because I can't, because it's going to show you a 30-second okay. ad first. So. Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> Dumb ads. Come <laughs> through! And then oh, now the ads on there. Stupid ads. ads. Dumb it's ads. So, it's Making the internet that, free. That the ads are for specific moments now. Like, when you watch CNN or ABC News, and it's sponsored by Kellogg's, yeah. it's one thing. But when you want to watch one moment, like a man being beaten to death in Egypt, sponsored by <laughs> Target. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, yeah, Target. <laughs> like, did you know the Geico? And then a man being beaten to death in Egypt. <laughs> Doesn't seem to go. Geico huh? brought you this guy being beaten. <laughs> Thank you, Geico. And aren't they funny? And what do they even fucking do? Yeah. I don't even know what they're selling. Oh. Let's see. Hey, oh, boy. Oh, oh, there's this. this there's a story video. It's this an old video. The story, the story video. Oh, yes. Uh, hey, remember uh, these? Duff had a, a story video too in his uh, career. A couple of. Them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hell. Oh, we're really going through this whole deal. Yeah. Oh my god. Are we really going through this whole deal? Any Lennox is. Oh my yeah. god! It's a minute in. Finally. Wow. This took took forever. This better be good. This is like... I know. I see you, you're kind of over there. Here we go. Uh-huh. Any second now. Get to the chorus, please. <laughs> Are you sweating? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But isn't, isn't that a pretender song? See you, honey. I don't know what it is. Uh, yeah, middle of the road. You, honey. A little bit, right? Yeah, a little bit. All right, so play the Gaga. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're making oh, it. Danny's fucking head is going to explode. Ready for this. <laughs> Don't you know how to use tabs? Yeah. Would I lie to you? Yeah. 
I think. Oh, I, you're doing your own mashup. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. All right. I'm not gonna win any. I think it's tougher. <laughs> it's obvious, obviously tougher with pop music because yeah. there's not many directions you go. <laughs> there's only so many notes for pop music, uh, right? Sure. There's uh, yeah, about twelve. About twelve. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot. Well, yeah, combinations the, of twelve are pretty yeah, pretty it, high. It gets pretty infinite. Yeah. <laughs> pretty infinite. <laughs> pretty. It's it's pretty infinite. Slightly. What is the universe? Infinite. It's pretty infinite. It's pretty. It's pretty infinite. Wow, that uh, that Alan Parsons though. Holy shit! I yep. didn't hear that one yet. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so okay, listen. Yeah, um, let's go. Joke for for all ages here. Um, right. You know why Tigger bounces on his tail? Because he's a cunt. <laughs> no, <laughs> so he doesn't no. step on poo. Uh, uh oh. oh. No, <laughs> that's not working. I don't think you're winning no, awards sorry. for that either. <laughs> really? Uh. I had some good jokes last time uh. I was on here. That one was not so good. How sorry. come Louis was sorry. trying to do oh. music and Duff's trying to do comedy? <laughs> no, check it out. That really yeah, isn't working out well. <laughs> Two lesbian frogs are sitting on a lily pad. Uh -huh. One and the one lesbian frog oh, looks at the other one and goes, "You know what? We really do taste like chicken." This is my joke. Mm -hmm. Louis just nodding. Well, want to, want to <laughs> do another I can't another respond match? to jokes usually. That was no, kind of a respectful uh, nod he gave me there. Uh, uh, Louis, show I'm him not how. sure it works, so I don't get it. I like your kung fu. Louis, pick up a guitar and show him how that feels. Yeah, <laughs> I, know. I, know. I know. I respect. I respect that very much. Show him how that feels. <laughs> Yeah, you I see, that, see how that felt? That's this. I'm Watch. just fucking yeah. That's a start. No, music, be, hitting a chord that people remember is such Forever. a fucking powerful. I was at the Knicks game last night with oh, Chris, Chris Rock. I don't want to brag. I never been like, You just did. We were at the game and they're playing all this music, you know, all kinds of rock and roll and stuff. And we were thinking about, like, I forget one of the songs. What's the song you hear at the fucking. Always Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, uh, used to be Gary Glitter. Yeah. Crazy yeah. Guy in trouble. And then we were yeah. thinking, like, there's been comics who have written jokes that are as good as some of these songs, but they fucking evaporate. They don't, nobody, you can't just they're gone. Play them over nobody and over. plays Steve Martin saying, Excuse me, after a <laughs> slam dunk. And That'd that be was, good. and Excuse good. me That's, was pretty that could phenomenal. Be good, though. You, yeah. might, you might have started You know, they the could do it today. after a foul called on a hometown. Tell me guy. about the game. I, I don't, what happened? Uh, Car yeah, that guy Carmelo was great. I know great. all about that, yeah. So Melo was there. Playing. He was great. He was great. That's a big played, sports uh, fan. They played the 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 Bucks. Uh, the Bucks, yeah. And uh, the game started, and they the Bucks looked really good because yeah. they've been playing together as a team. Yeah, yeah, and the Knicks had two new guys on the floor. That guy Chauncey. I don't know how you grow up black with named Chauncey, Chauncey. He's but a, he's he a great fucking too. is so good. He's a great player. He was running the offense, yeah. and it's his new team. Right. And the thing I really liked about the Carmelo guy is that he played really smart and conscientiously. Like he wasn't just a star throwing mm -hmm. up hoops. He looked like he was into the like he was crafty. Like we'll get the stuff you get to watch when you're there. That the camera's not there. Yeah, like yeah. watching him yeah, set yeah. up picks, watching him fool guys for the benefit of somebody else. Like doing fake, give me the ball stuff when the ball's nowhere near, <laughs> or pretending the pass is coming. Like that's something that great players do, because when your defender's looking at you, and then you pretend, oh, here comes the ball, and then the yeah. guy turns around and you fucking dash. To the, like he did <laughs> such cool stuff. Yeah, he looked like a guy who hoped he was playing well. He looked, you know what I mean? You look at a guy and it's like he doesn't look cocky. Mm -hmm. the and best? then he just quietly scored fucking twenty nine points. Whatever his first game win? in New York, something Knicks, like that. Win, Knicks win. They won. Yeah, they, they won did. by four. They were never behind. I mean, the Bucks. They're not. You know, they should have beat them. They get, Bucks can beat anybody sure. at any given time. But Duff's but, uh, not an NBA fan anymore. Well, I know here's about the deal. Duff. I'm from Seattle, and they lost their team. Yeah, that sucks. Our, our team, yeah, but the I think the best you're talking about kind of sort of uh, off of the camera play. Yeah, uh, remember Sam Perkins? Oh yeah, yeah. three point guy. Yeah, and he always looked like. And I think I, I think he was baked the whole time on, on weed. <laughs> yeah. Those lazy yeah. eyes. We called him Sleepy Sam. Yeah, yeah. Sleepy uh, eyes. I mean, the, the word was out like he he smoked a lot of weed, and it looked like he was high on you know court. Yeah. But he would just kind of meander. Right. But he he was, me he was so crafty with it. He would all of a sudden he'd be there out like in, in the, in the mm -hmm. corner for a, for a three pointer, and just a great guy to watch, like mm. sitting. Yeah, there just the I like earnest players. Yeah. How did Seattle lose their team? It, it how, was do you, how do you criminal. allow that to happen? It was not unlike the Cleveland Browns thing. Right, it, from back you know, in the day. Yeah. Uh, it was, was it the it was middle horrible. of the night type of thing? Yeah, but I think some team, like, you know, Green Bay still has Lambeau Field. They still, they're still operating the same way they always did. I mean, every whenever you start buying massive stadiums and needing a bigger and bigger profit margin to stay alive, you just, it's easy to tumble. 
Like if you, teams that have stayed in weird towns, right? Like yeah, but Portland or whatever, is because they just sort of just keep doing the same thing. Well, when they start overgrowing, I think is when. Why? It's like, why was it criminal for the Seattle? Uh, Super well, Sox? okay. So Howard Schultz, the CEO of. By the way, Starbucks. we're going to acknowledge you do have to go, but I just want to hear this answer, and then we'll get you. Out okay, so Howard Schultz on the team. He's CEO of Starbucks. Um, I think he had some whatever health problems, and and he it was too much of a burden for him to. To have the Sonics. So, Clay Bennett, who, when there was the hurricane in New Orleans, New Orleans went up to Oklahoma City and played during that like half of the season. Yeah, that? yeah. Clay Bennett was sort of this guy, this mover and shaker in Oklahoma City, Stern's like best friend. So all of a sudden, Clay Bennett's up. I'll buy the Sonics. Well, there's a there was a you know thing in the co contract that. So he could move the team. Howard Schultz had in place. You can't move the team if you're going to buy. Goodbye, but you can't move. Yeah, and gotcha. it was a, and uh, he yeah. bought the team and, and moved them. So there was you know lawsuits and all that stuff. But you know, of course, the fans. We don't care about skyboxes and, and luxury suites, and we, we just want our team. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, and it was really uh, really pretty. That's pretty, pretty sad. sad. Yeah, yeah. So it didn't matter. It's like when Har in Harvard Square there used to be a place called the Tasty Diner that was there since like the forties. And uh, the the company that eventually sold the building to Abercrombie bought the building and said they were going to tear down the Tasty and everything in it. And so everybody started defending the Tasty, and it was a big movement. And Same somebody tasty. found out that George Washington had an office in the building. <laughs> oh, shit. And so they said, so it got put on the National Register. You can't tear this down because it was a historic building, and everybody celebrated. And so the company that was going to, that bought the building, thought you know, figured out, what happens when you tear down a building? Oh, <laughs> they don't. You don't go to jail. You don't go to the electric <laughs> oh, chair. Right. You get fined. What a fucking two hundred thousand dollars. That's a great yeah, half. Yeah. What you fucking That's probably right. <laughs> wow. theoretically <laughs> lost on a blackjack table. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. Fuck Dude, George Washington is the. Uh, fuck it. That's what I just learned. So then they just go. Fuck it. Just Holy pay it. Shit. Tear it down. Pay the fine. Wow. wow. And by the way, the building is no longer national. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> it ain't anymore. Yeah, uh, and they ripped it down. They ripped it down. So that's what that guy did. He's like, yeah. it says I can't move the Seattle to, out of Seattle, or else yeah. what? Yeah, yeah. That's well, right. we'll right. be awful mad at yeah. you. You know that, D Duff. You really got to go. They're they're begging uh, us to oh, trade okay. you okay. out here. I, I don't Fellas, know. You must have a business schedule. Me on, so uh, loaded. The taking comes out April nineteenth here in the, in the United States, and. Uh, yeah. And next time you're in New York, we want you to play. The last time you played, it was awesome. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this was good. Trust me. I liked it. But uh, we'd like to, you know, see you play a little bit. My too. jokes, I should have brought a little stronger. No, you were fine. Stronger <laughs> joke. I was going to think about it. Really you were in Guns N' Roses. Don't worry about it. You're fine. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah. No, but you should have been in my morning. I'm just a take. shitty shock jock. Don't worry about it. You're no. fine. You're fine. No, you guys Your are legacy great. is set, okay? Uh, Okay, no, well, Duff well, McKagan, the uh, good friend of the show. You. Thanks for the music. All right, you're welcome. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks, Duff. Duff. Right, Always guys, a pleasure. Good, good one. Uh, Might as well wrap up. Louis, yeah. just an amazing mm. appearance by Louis C.K. He's going to be at the Borgata, Borgata April 23rd. Tickets on sale now, so please buy please them. Please buy them. Like show I said, I saw him at Carnegie, and I mean, I don't know what you're waiting for. It's an amazing show. Thank you. Are you going to have someone, some, somebody warm up for you? Yeah, today? somebody good. I don't know yet. Get Ted again. I like the Ted. Somebody. Eh, you'll figure it out. That's, that's somebody. That, that's your gig. And uh, Louis C.K. on Twitter. I think that's it. Nice. Ready to go home? Great show. All right. <laughs> Later. This, this is the Opie and Anthony Show. Opie and Anthony. On the virus. Sirius XM. Sirius XM. The virus. The following sexually explicit CB radio transmission took place one evening in early 2010 between radio personalities Jim Norton and Anthony Cumia. Neither party has been made aware of its existence until now. I'm thinking about you. Yeah. Did you get the video I sent? Yeah. I really do want to be rough with you. Wow. Well, what what do you want to do? What are you going to do to wear me out? I want to treat you rough. Throw you around. Spank and slap you. Slap your face. Yeah. Treat you like a dirty little whore. Put my cock in your ass and then shove it down your throat. I want you to bite me. Now you're talking. Then I'm going to tell you to shut the fuck up while I slap your face and pull your hair for making noise. Wow. I want you to beg for my cock. Yeah. Kiss you all over to convince me to let you have it in your mouth. We will see how bad you want me. Whatever else turns you on. Whatever I want, you are mine. 
You please me like no other has or ever will. I'm not losing that. Great thing is we have...